Hello and welcome to the Unofficial Controller Podcast, your weekly gaming podcast. Rather fittingly, episode 69, Bobby's Top 10. With me, George, as always joined by Bobby. Bobby to my Brian. How's it going? Good, I'm good. How are you? Yeah, I am um, extremely flattered for that you turned up. The first time, you know, we got you trapped in Tom's apartment. This time, you're living there and you've actually chosen to join us. You're not just accidentally picked up the headset and then ended up doing a podcast and traveling in time. Um, how's your week been? So far, so good. Kind of nice weather. Only one day I had to put the AC on, which is good. Oh, okay. Yeah. Weather's hot there in sunny New York? It's hot. and I don't, know, I don't mind the heat too much. It's just the humidity. It really it's, brings you down. It's an autumnal. It's really horrible here. New York. Yeah. Brown leaves I, starting to come down. Like, imagine you go to work 7 a.m., right? You're waiting on the, in the subway for the train, and you're just dripping sweat. And that's what's going everywhere. Ooh. And then you got to go to work. It's 7 in the morning. Like, what, you can't escape it. So you have to either put a lot of baby powder or hopefully have a shower at your job. <laughs> I don't know, dude. What areas of your body would you baby powder? Everything. Everything. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> Yeah, I'm the, the chest, same. The I've chest, recently the back. covered talcum powder as an adult, and I douse yeah. myself in it. I come out of the bathroom looking like a ghost, Bobby. Yeah, I, 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 I sit down, you see puffs of powder, whatever, I don't care. No, and I leave like white footprints everywhere as well. <laughs> everywhere, yeah. yeah. I have when a little you, duster, I so can't, I can dust the floor a little bit. When it gets in the lino, you can't seem to get it out, so now there's like a white shroud. Almost like those Hiroshima <laughs> shadows that get burnt on the wall, like a talc version of me. Before we get any more distracted, Bobby, let's give new listeners an old breakdown of how the show's going to go. Coming up, we've got some news, and then there's going to be a review of Ninty's latest information release, which has me sort of 75% excited, I would say. Then we're going to okay. go into the feature, where we're going to give fans the opportunity to learn a little bit about you. So back in the day, me and Tom recorded a pilot where we talked about our top 10 games of all time. I always find top 10s kind of fluctuate for me. One minute, I'll be like, best game I've ever played. And then the next minute, you know, I'll put Minesweeper and Solitaire in there. I'm not that fussy. Then we're going to go uh, do Listener Stingray, the triumphant return, because Tom's currently in a maximum security penitentiary just in New York there. I don't know what the name of the prison is, but I've got a letter to read out. It says, okay. uh, hi, boys. Bobby, thank you for doing the show in my absence. I'm making lots of new friends here. Big Rick is a big new fan of mine. He helps me wash my back in the shower. And currently, we're reading romantic poems to each other as our cells border each other. Thanks for all your hard work. The Walking Ego, a.k.a. Tom. Hope to see you soon. My parole should be up for renewal in five to ten years. So that's a little note from Tom. What do you make of that? Well, you know, sucks. I'm kind of sad. But I'm happy he has a friend in Big Rick. <laughs> Big Rick sounds... Very, yeah. I think Big Rick's probably happier than Tom. Listen, and Big, Rick, that... Big Rick might protect Tom. Well, you know, I think he will. I think uh, yeah. Big Rick's very happy that he's found Tom. Probably save his, uh, probably save calluses on his hand. I'd imagine having uh, Tom to throw around the cell. I'll leave that up to your imagination. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Tom's incarceration means the mulleted maestro can return to the listeners everywhere, really, and they can pick up bits from him and post those pictures on Instagram with the hashtag Stingray's Boot, which. We've missed, haven't we? I've missed it. I like it. Tom didn't like it because we were looking at other people's things more than his, so it got canned, but now it's gone. We can bring it. Now he's, hopefully he's uh, listening to the show in the penitentiary, but you never know. He's probably not, in which case it's back anyway. Then after that, the real deal, the real man rips down our driver, rips down Broadway in New York. Simultaneously, we pop the boot. We have a look at the new release highlights for this week. Then... After that, I asked Bobby what he's hoping to play for that gaming week, but the show cannot begin until I ask. Hang on a minute. Hmm. Odd has nearly careered off the motorway. He's like, well, I'm not gripping the wheel tight enough here, boys. You know, hang on. Odd has gripped that wheel. Bobby, what have you been playing? 
Ghost of Tsushima. Oh my goodness gracious me! We're gonna to have to ban you from that game. Yeah, how, how many more hours you got to put into it? I, I should be done this week. I, I'm very at the end game. I, I, all, I, well, I think the last mission is just go get Khan. But I oh. pretty much have the whole map, the whole third part of the map, uh, defogged, and I just need two more camps. Everything's upgraded. I have two, one more mission for the tales. The stories, you know, the side stories. Oh wow, you've uh, really I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's, that's it. Exploited this, haven't you? Oh yeah, man. And I'm going. I'm going like I'm not even trying to go fast. It's just like I'm in it. You know, I'm I'm so immersed immersed into this game. It's it's uh, crazy. Okay, well, what I would say is, I was glad. And I've still got it to go back to. Um, but I was glad I left some things to do post game. Oh really? And that's my warning to you. Mm. So don't feel like you need to finish everything just to get that PP drop, the okay. big PP drop. I know that's how you finish games, but you know what? These worlds are awful empty, aren't they? Yeah, that's true. And uh, that game... What, you been? what have I been playing? What have you been playing? Oh, well. <laughs> just like you, I'm guilty of really only playing one <laughs> game. Final Fantasy Thirteen At the 60-hour mark, as it clicked over... I managed to complete the game. Wow. And my goodness gracious me, I would say it's 10 hours too long. Okay. But considering whenever the game came out, I can't remember when it came out, I have thoroughly, not thoroughly, I've enjoyed it. I think if I had to be pinned down, if you pin me down on the floor now, Bobby, because you're American, you know, Matt wrestling moves, <laughs> Pin me down, get me in an arm bar, get me a headlock and say, rate it, George. Rate that game now. I'll be like, oh, Bobby, please, I'm tapping out. Let me go. I'll give it, give it, a, uh, I'll give it a six and a half. Um, maybe a bit more. At times when it was all working and everything was great, I was like, this is brilliant. I can't get enough of it. The first 20 hours whizzed by in a heartbeat. The next 10 hours sort of mooched by. Mm-hmm. And then the 10 hours after that dragged and then, there was a lot of leveling up and a lot of low-level fights. The actual end game sequence was hard as well. They just kept chucking very high-statted enemies in, mm-hmm. just in the way, and you can see them. And you thought, like, oh, I've got that oh, to get yeah. next, and I've got to kill that next, and oh, I've got to kill one of them next. And I struggled with that earlier in the game. I'm slightly more statted now. We'll see how it works out. And... The paradigms are cool. It shifts things up, so it's not as turn-based as a rig- as more traditional Final Fantasies are. It's not you know you don't just wait and then they hit you and then you hit them sort of thing. There are um, it is turn-based, but it's a little bit more interactive than that. You're switching paradigms, you're switching roles of people on your team. The actual story was interesting to me to see what the main five were going through. Um, or is it six? There's how much info, there's how much notice I paid to the game, Bobby. Um, <laughs> but the I had ultimately when it finished, I still didn't really have any idea what to go on, and it could have been a tearjerker, but I wasn't so invested that I was ready to roar. But you know, other than yeah. that, once I dusted that off, you see, I'm in a bit of a quandary because on my shelf, I've got a game called Murdered Soul Suspect, which mm, I promise. I have that too. I promised myself I'd play that next. Mm-hmm. I've also been sort of dipping into MGS4 as a sort of palette cleanser, but I'm, I'm in two minds about that one. It's it's a good game, don't get me wrong, but I'm, I'm just a little bit unsure of the direction of it, really. And if it's not one of those two, in fact, what I'll do is I'll double down and give MGS4 a right good play in today mm-hmm. and then maybe slap in Murdered Soul Suspects, see how it goes. But for the most part, I don't want to dive straight into Final Fantasy XIII Part Two because I feel that might be a little bit extreme. Yeah. Um, and that, as they say, Bobby, is our what you've been playing section. So you've not played any other games? No, just that. Literally, every time I get a chance, just throw it on. Okay, well, at that note then, Odders can relax his grip on the wheel. Just slightly, Odders. I don't want to see you in a ditch. It's time for the news. We scoured the very darkest regions of the internet to bring you the latest stories. First up, Ninty Surprises. This is a big one, so I better make sure my teeth are stuck in, Bobby. (laughs) 
<laughs> Nintendo has, has at last lifted the lid on its celebrations for Super Mario Brothers' 35th anniversary via a Nintendo Direct broadcast so full of Mario games, old and new. Headline in the announcements was the re-release of Mario's three 3D platforming classics, Super Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine, and Super Mario Galaxy. The Super Mario 3D All-Stars collection will arrive on the 18th of September, but will be removed from sale at the end of next March, which we find quite a bizarre way of selling the game. But hey, that's only the physical edition. No doubt that will spike used copies all over the place. Speaking of Mario Collections, the original Super Mario All-Stars pack released back on the SNES is now available to play via the Nintendo Switch Online. Online subscribers will find it in their catalogue. Well, by now, if they go into it listening to the show, it will definitely be there, allowing them to once again play Super Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers The Lost Levels, Super Mario Brothers 2, Super Mario Brothers 3. Next up, we saw a really... Did you see this, Bobby? The fascinatingly interesting augmented reality version of Mario Kart was revealed. Mario Kart Live Home Circuit lets you drive real Mario Kart toys around your living room via virtual tracks which duck through and around your furniture. Either a Mario and Luigi toy will ship alongside copies on the 16th. Mario Kart Tour, the gacha-filled smartphones version of the series, will meanwhile host an in-game anniversary event from the 9th to the 23rd of September, featuring SNES Mario Kart versions of Mario and Donkey Kong to unlock. It wasn't just Mario software, a dinky little um, Game & Watch Super Mario Bros. handheld was revealed for the launch on November 13th, neatly fitting into this year's stocking fill a spot previously taken up by the NES and SNES mini consoles. If you're a kid and you've got a stocking large enough to house a NES and SNES mini, you're, you're next level. This device, will, this is what happens when you let uh, James Work Experience Boy write the news. He's basically writing a Christmas list here. This device will let you play the original Super Mario Brothers game will also act as an alarm clock, amongst other things. Many other Nintendo games will also get in on the celebrations. Super Smash will host an online tournament. Classic Mario uh, characters items in November and December. Mario Maker 2 will get an anniversary-themed Ninja Speedrun course. Splatoon 2 will also host a Super Mario-themed Splatfest in January 2021. Perhaps most excitingly, Animal Crossing New Horizons fans will be able to add Super Mario-themed furniture to their islands, though not until March next year. Physical bits and bobs will be available to purchase from the Nintendo Store. The Direct also included a roundup of the various Mario toys and merchandise already launched this summer, such as the enormous range of LEGO Mario sets and the LEGO NES console, Super Mario Monopoly and more. Bobby, what did you make of that fact, fun-filled uh, Nintendo Direct there? If you're a Mario fan, this is amazing. One, because... My only... Oh, okay. Well, I was just going to say my only slight gripe, when we got Super Mario All-Stars on the SNES, They'd redone the sprites, cleaned it up, made it look awesome, really, utilizing everything the 16-bit machine could offer. Super Mario 64, Mario Sunshine, and Mario Galaxy just look like straight straight ports. Yeah, it does. It looks I like a straight a, emulation. Yeah, I was a little bit disappointed that we didn't get you know, Mario 64 looking like Super Mario Galaxy. Maybe mm-hmm. that would have upset people, but I remember when I got Mario All-Stars as a kid, I was like, oh, thank goodness it's not that blocky 8-bit nonsense, and we're getting something that looks universal across all the games but i'm i'm a very strange cat admittedly what else excited you there bobby hey, listen if the technology they used for the mario kart live looks yeah. really interesting you just need space so if you have the space it's great and obviously the money yeah but if you don't have the space then i mean what, what are you gonna play it mm. you know maybe, that's the maybe down the b-ball courts I can't Maybe. see it lasting two minutes before some sort of uh, crack addict decides that's his next <laughs> uh, trip through yeah. the life. Fantastic, though, and it's gone. And you, I was in some good Wi-Fi because it has to be worked with Bluetooth or something like that. Yeah, I... Listen, James, the work experience boy, saw it, and he was like, oh, wow, I need that. And I thought to myself, yeah, do you know what? That is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I mean, I'm not going to buy anything. You're not going to buy any of that? No, because I already have the originals, so I don't need an- another sixty dollars game of something I already have. True. The Mario Kart, yeah, it looks good, but I mean, it's more for children, which I don't have any. So, you know, and what else is there? The the, the watch, the Nintendo watch, Game and Watch. Eh. Yeah. Those, those never interested me really. I, I'm not really a handheld guy. Literally, I have the Switch, and I only play it from the TV. Do you, that Game & Watch looks like something that 
a little bit like the Sega Game Gear Mini that got released. It almost yeah. looks like something that collectors are going to buy two of. Mm-hmm. I've been down this road before. Maybe play with one, put a picture on Instagram, and then yeah, put the other one in deep storage and hope that it accumulates money like gold. Or you pull it for a raffle. So once they're sold out, a lot of Instagrammers, I noticed they found that they take a sold out item, mm-hmm. they do a raffle, they put, you know, however, I mean, however many people times X amount of money for the raffle, and then, you know, they're going to make their money and someone might win that for 20 bucks, 15 bucks, mm-hmm. or just sell it on eBay for ridiculous amounts of money. And somebody will buy it because people like to collect. They do. They do. Um, I'm like you. The Mario Kart thing was of, to me personally, wasn't of a massive amount of interest. But I did find the technology behind it interesting. Yes, very. The Mario All Stars again. The only thing that pulls that down for me is I know it's probably going to be available digital forever. Mm-hmm. But having the physical edition only be on sale until the end of next March, I find like really strange. Why do that? I don't know. It's odd by Nintendo. Maybe just be able to go out and buy them and just get it before you know it runs out, and then you have to get pay X amount of money for something like that. Do you think or they just, need... just you know? I don't know the way they're selling. You're like, oh, you have to have it now, so get it now. Do you think it helps them to have a good end to their financial year because that's presumably runs till the end of March, so they want everyone buying it to prop their year up a little bit for their books. Yeah, I would say so too. Just, I mean, it's a smart move if you're, oh, listen, I need to get it now because it's going to run out. People might have the mentality, oh, let me get it now rather than later, where it might actually run out before March. Mm. I don't um, like things like that, though. I don't like timed, oh, if, you know, five months you could buy it, and then so what? What if I have no money in five months? No, I can't I, get it at all. I just feel it's a little bit sort of shady and yeah, probably uh, yeah. promotes the whole sort of, bulk buyers you'll see about you'll see on instagram no it's doubt. gonna be a scalper's but, dream ex- a scalpers is the word i was looking for yeah. like six copies but look what yeah. i've got like, yeah great i can't get one and my kid wants it yeah. for christmas and then it was 60 bucks and now it's 250 and 350 and then maybe in a year from now they'll show it mint condition in the plastic oh a thousand oh god can you imagine so right. there's some there's some nintendo games from 30 years ago that are almost 500 dollars. so can you imagine what this is going to sell for crazy it is uh what's this last bit of news to round us out bobby has nancy the intern sent you your script she's uh, on the she's on the verge of getting sacked yeah i didn't get it sorry you didn't get it no sir well it probably got sent to the other handsome rob out there but uh in that case it doesn't matter what you call it uh, the good old Microsoft and their storefront, forever a source of reliable leaks, and thankfully for them, we've got something to talk about. The Redmond firm seemingly has no interest in stopping. It's now called, It's now spoiled Ubisoft's big God of Monsters reveal, which is scheduled to take center stage during the publisher's big live stream next week. We already know about the name change to be eye-rollingly awful Immortals Phoenix Rising. That's a mouthful and a half, but it looks <laughs> like the title will release on the 2nd of December. There's also been some new screenshots included alongside the leak since the game was announced E3 2019. The title has undergone a significant makeover. Its cartoon proportions and painterly art style have been scrapped for more realistic characters and oversaturated colours. To be honest, this looks like next-gen Kid Icarus to us. We're not sure Nintendo, listens, uh, we're sure Nintendo listeners will also spy the similarities when they take a gander at the screenshots. This could, this could have been Ninty's uh, version of Kid Icarus, but... Alas, no. Bobby, have you seen this uh, Phoenix Rising stuff going on or not? No, not the updated stuff. Just, the, just the, from the original uh, things I've seen, I didn't see anything new about it. Uh, right, okay. Well, it's, uh, it basically looks like a next-gen Kid Icarus, a game that probably many fans would give their right arm for. Mm-hmm. It did we look got... good from what I saw. Listen, I thought it looked fantastic. I thought, it, yeah, it was very interesting too, so... Now they updated it, it's kind of... Well, yeah, I, you know. it could be... It's just a shame, I suppose, because I know that we've already had the Prince of Persia remake sort of spoiled as well. That's yeah. already out there in the ether. So, you know, well, I don't know why Microsoft keep listing these things. on. I suppose for us video game podcasts, 
it's good news. If you're looking for secrets and things to be surprised by, you're probably going to tune into Ubisoft's show and think, I already know all this. I'll listen to the unofficial controller podcast. I know about Prince of Persia. I know about all this other ramble. Um, Bobby, did we miss anything? And no doubt this week we absolutely missed a boatload of gaming information. But if the assembled masses of listeners out there had an opinion or take on the news we missed, how would they get in contact with us? And let us know that we are, if nothing else, the floor sweepers of podcast news. <laughs> that we are. If we miss anything and you want to contact us, you can hit us up at our IG, on our Twitter account, or even in our uh, email, unofficial.com, at, at Yahoo, I believe. No, we're going to have to take you off, and we're going to have to get you a tattoo, much like Tom. He's no doubt sporting that ink there. I bet Big Rick knows the uh, unofficial controller podcast email. I bet he does. I'm horrible it's, with email. <laughs> it's questions at unofficialcontrollerpodcast.com. We don't, even, right. we don't even Yahoo it, Bobby. I'm old school. I Yahoo everything. Back in the Farmerton days, we used our sort of anonymous stepfather, Lord Ponsonbury's increasingly large wealth to pay for the launch of the show, the Instagram, the Twitter, and I even begged him. I begged him on bended knee. Can we please have a questions at email? Take my credit card, boy, and make it happen which I did, um, and he supported us there. But now, much like Bambi, Bobby, the show's been born. It's been spat out of its mother. It's standing around and sort of slipping around, and it's trying to stand. It's like we're like walking on ice at the moment, Bobby. <laughs> to, that, to that end, let's slip and slide into the feature, which is going to give the listeners, new and old, hardcore and not, those that are hardcore listeners, they're on the Discord. They're sat up now in their chair. They push, push their chest out. They're like, oh, yeah, I'm on the Discord. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm somebody. Yes, you are. And thank you for your loyal listenership. But even those people, they might not know you as intimately as I think we should know you. Let's, let's take a delve, a little walk through the world of Bobby, through the medium of his top 10 games. Yep, yep. That's this week's feature. Bobby's top 10. I'm going to pull up a chair. I don't know what's on this list. So I'm the fans. Are, what? It's not, it's not scripted. No, it's not. We're going to go. What's it called? Free running. Yeah. We're going to go free running, Bobby. We're going to let loose. So let's do it in reverse order. Don't give me a number one. Give okay. me your 10th least popular favorite. Actually, what I did was I put it in alphabetical order. Because it's oh. so it's so heartbreaking to pick which one, which two. I was really getting a, Listen, a headache. So I, I you know want to hear you sweat. I want to see <laughs> you get a migraine. Take a pencil. Now pick your, out of that list, pick your least favorite. Oh, this is tough. Oh, as he's driving down the road, he's like, yeah. Yeah, man. man. Make him squirm, George. Make him squirm. Super tough. I was figuring out better go order was the way to go. If I had to pick a 10th, I would say probably Jackal. Jackal? Yeah, on on NES. This is my top 10 NES. Okay. So I would say Jackal would be my 10th. Well, don't tell us anymore. Give okay. me a deep dive on Jackal. Tell me what it is. So Jackal is basically, it's a, I guess, run and gun with a Jeep game. Uh, they're uh, like a top view. Where oh. you have a little Jeep, you're shooting, you know, various tanks or, you know, statues through six levels of the jungle. It's two players. Uh, my father told me that it was my uh, Uncle Tom when he was in the Marines, that this is the <laughs> game he's in. So I thought I was dry because he actually has photos of him in a Jeep, much like the game. So I thought I was playing with my Uncle Tom, which was hilarious. Wow. But it's not. So I found that out of the, you know, later on in life. <laughs> but uh, I played this all the time with my, with my little sister. My father played it. Uh, he beat it several times over. Um, really good two-player co-op game. As a one-player game, it's still fun, but it's really good two-player co-op. Forgive my ignorance. Is Uncle Tom still with us? No. 
he passed before I was Rest born. in peace, Uncle. Yeah, 82, he left, he left us. Wow, okay. So this, this holds many sort of cherished memories for you, this game. Yeah, exactly. This have is you not got, really like the top 10, you know, Have you gone best. back and played it as an adult, like I in the last just, two years? Yeah, actually, I played it like uh, two months ago with Eva. She, apparently, she had this game as a kid too, so we played it together. Wow. Okay. Pretty good at it too. I kind of like, okay, look at you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I didn't expect her to be good at all. But A wife of what, 10 years, is it? 10 years you've been married? Almost, almost together 12 years now. Almost 12 years, and she's yeah. still surprising you. What a woman yes. Queen of Anthea is. Yeah, and r- random, too. We were looking at the, the games on the emulation. She saw, oh, I had that game. Let's play it. What? You had Jackal? <laughs> you had Jackal? What? I thought she only had Mario. So that's all she plays, so it kind of shocked me. Wow. Her shelf full of Mario games, and right at the end, Jackal. <laughs> Jackal. So Proudest weird. game. Okay. <laughs> well, I think that covers off Jackal, Bobby. So now the pressure's on. Well, not in a way, not because you've managed to strike one off the list, Jackal for the NES, which now leaves you nine games to pick from. Yeah, from that list, Bobby, what's your ninth least popular game? I would say Maniac Mansion. Maniac Mansion. That was a yeah. NES game, was it not? From memory, it was a yeah. A, it was a NES Atari. I mean, basically everything I think at the time. But it was really, I first played it. Well, I watched my friend Adam's mom play it on the computer. So give, us a, was, give us a synopsis. What is it? It's a Lucas Arts game, and mm. there's a weird, like an alien crash landed in this town, and it kidnapped someone's girlfriend for experiments. So now you can pick up to three people to investigate the house to see where his girlfriend is, wow. and each character has their own strengths and weaknesses. So an alien comes all the way from outer space. Boom, crash to abduct someone. Oh, it crash lands. That's why it's yeah. used the home. That's why it's used the houses. So I was going to say this mm-hmm. alien. He's not a terribly cutting edge, is he? He's going to get. He's going to put a down payment for rent on this mm-hmm. creaky looking mansion and abduct people into it. But it makes more sense when you say he got here and crashed. Yeah. He went to park and then floored it and smashed the fender off his face. Yeah. <laughs> There's a weird doctor that is trying to, you know, use this. It's, I guess you know, world domination, typical 80s story. But um, this is interesting because I've never seen any game like this ever. It's like basically a point and click. Yeah. Um, you know, there's various things you could do. There's several ways you can go about the game. You can't really fail. Oh, well, I guess you can fail because you get stuck in the basement, but you can always get that person out. So depending on who you pick, the game plays out differently, which I thought was pretty neat considering every game I played was just okay left to right done yeah so how, how cool. does the point and click interface work on the NES actually it's not so bad you can once you get used to it you can kind of click and choose what you want I think they dumbed it down a little bit mm. for the NES compared to what I saw obviously the graphics are a little you know not as good as the computer but still works really well I think even now this would be cool if they remastered it because they did they had the tentacle which is the sequel to this. Ah. So they could definitely... Now it makes more yeah. sense to me. So they could, definitely, they could definitely do this for sure. Oh, wow. And they probably should have done that first before they remastered Day of the Tentacle. Yeah, for some reason, Day of the Tentacle, you know, I just... More people like that game than the original, which... Mm. I, li- I like them both, but I feel like they should have gone, like, as a remaster together. So you can experience the full story. To me, it would have made more sense. Maybe next time one of them gets a remaster, it will be the double pack, and we'll get both. That that would be awesome. Okay, I'm Bobby. Sure. Well, the fans are starting to get a piece together in their mind, mosaic-like. <laughs> Through these games, they're creating images in their mind of what it's like to be you. The next question I have for you. Mm-hmm. That's two off. Yeah. If my rather poor maths lessons here in sunny England mean anything to me that tells me there's eight games left yes sir what's your eighth least popular game of your top 10 then i would say solomon's keys oh this is uh it's a puzzle game you play as a wizard named dana which i was thought was a female's name i did too apparently not it's unisex 
Dana Carvey, and, uh, I suppose, of uh, yeah, Wayne's so World fame. You're that's right. That's why I thought the same thing. Yeah. Uh, so he can he can either make a block or destroy a block. And then you can use those blocks to jump on different platforms wow. to get the key and then go through the door. So everything takes place in a, a square room. Yeah. And there's X amount of blocks. You can, you know, there's an unlimited amount of blocks you can make to get to where you need to go. Yeah. But there's like 50 something levels, if not more. What format was this on? This was on Nintendo. NES. As yeah, we all would Nintendo. Call it. Yeah. Yeah. So your whole top 10 is Nintendo. Well, I actually broke down top 10 for everything I had. Oh, right. So we've got like 30, 40, 50 games to go through. Pretty much, yeah. Oh, my goodness. We thought it was going to be quick. Well, <laughs> I mean, it, it can be. I could just run them down, you know. If you see something interesting, boom, I'll stop and talk about it. Oh, well, I don't know what to do now. I like this walk <laughs> through memory lane, but... It's pretty uh, cool. I mean, I, you know, I wrote it down. Okay. Well, let's, that sounds like Minecraft on a budget meets Tetris. It's almost like they had a baby with a puzzle element in there. You can yes. make blocks, you can destroy blocks. But yeah, pretty much, yeah. Okay, well, give us your next two then on the NES. Then I would say uh, Pro Wrestling yeah. and um, Battle of Olympus. What's Battle of Olympus? It's basically a Zelda 2 clone, like literally almost identical in terms of gameplay and style. Is Zelda but 2 the one that went a bit side scrolly? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So this is just based on um, ancient Greece. It's the story of, I cannot pronounce his name, I think Odipius, and his long-lost love. He's trying to get her back. So he has to go through the whole you know, Greek Parthenon to figure out and destroy the monsters to get her back. Well, that's quite cool. So what's your... That takes us down to... Five left. Five left. Okay. All right. What's, what's next? Then I would say Gunsmoke. Yeah. Which was basically, you know, how Red Dead came to be. Without Gunsmoke, you wouldn't have Red Dead. Gunsmoke, though, is that not a sort of shoot 'em up? Yeah. It's basically a shoot 'em up, but you're as a cowboy instead of in a spaceship. A little bit like, uh, I don't know what we call it. Is it Sunset Riders on the Genesis? Or the Mega no, Drive? That's more like a running gun. And this is like I a would top say, down. Yeah, top down. You're a small character. You can shoot left, right, or straight. Right. Um, and then you can, you the only way to get to the end of the level, because it, it, it's a, it'll, it'll scroll in for an infinite amount of time. Right. Until you get the wanted poster. And then you can beat the boss. Right. That's, so, that's a, yeah, an interesting cool. take. I really liked it. If, uh, if Gunsmoke was integrated into the Oregon Trail, would mm-hmm. that be a retro, would that then become a retro Red Dead? Uh, yes, hundred percent. Did you? I got to eat, watch your peoples. Did you play Oregon's Trail at school? I did. Was it like an educational piece of software? They tried to make it educational, but I was just not paying attention to anything they said in class. But playing this game. Yeah, we never got it here. Obviously, here it got like a, a proper release. It was just seen as a game. But I've heard oh, that man. a lot of uh, American children have played Oregon's Trail. They we had a really similar one it. here on the BBC put their name to or made a home a computer that was an educational bit of kit that was in mm-hmm. schools and they had similar games that uh, but they weren't anywhere near as the depth or interestingness of Oregon Trail I'd love to play Oregon Trail I'm sure I could probably get it for this aged machine oh maybe. yeah I'm sure I mean to me Oregon Trail was amazing I never thought like it was actually a game I felt like the teacher was like you have to survive and protect your people. And are you going to eat? Or are you going to go here? Are you going to hunt that deer? You only have two arrows. I was like, oh, this is kind of intense for a freaking game. You know what yeah. I mean? It was crazy. Okay, so it. after Gunsmoke, what we got? Um, Batman the video game. Oh, Bobby, now we know. Those that know you dearly know this yeah. game means a hell of a lot to you. So yeah. why don't you take a little bit? Let's give this the airtime it deserves. Why don't you take some time out to tell us the story of Batman. The Batman 1989 movie. Yeah. So this was a, a movie, like I knew kind of of Batman, but wasn't really like a, a fan of it at the time. I was more Ninja Turtles. Mm-hmm. And then my father took me to see Batman on the big screen in the movie theater. Yeah. So I was like, man, this is amazing. I came out of that movie like with chills, bro. 
I'd never seen a character like this in my life. And I became Batman obsessed. So <laughs> I, my room went from green with Ninja Turtle stickers to like a gray with Batman stickers everywhere. And I was in it to win it and has been the same way since I was, you know, till this day with Batman. But, Do you uh, have any rooms? Have you redecorated any rooms in Tom's apartment to a Batman style? I found this piece on the back over here, kind of like dark and with a little bit of light. Might be cool for like a little back cave. He's, to be fair, if you'd put I mean, the right bottle of wine in the cellar, you'd have had access to a, a, a grotto. Yeah, I mean, I actually fell into when I was mopping the floor. Like a secret be. compartment. Ooh. So I'm scared to lean on the walls now because this thing just whoo, took me in. Wow, okay. We yeah, got now I have, it, I have it halfway open now, so I don't forget. Don't go in there. Don't poke around too much in there. I mean, it could have been used for something, but I don't know what it was used for. But now it's pretty clean. So. Uh, oh, right. Okay, you've done yeah. him a favor there. You've got rid of the evidence. Yeah, I like the little <laughs> light that comes in there. <laughs> Back to never take one of those UV lights in there that lets you see blood or spit because the room would be lit up like a paintball. Oh, I'm sure. I just, you know. Yeah, there's something that you don't do. And you don't need blue light <laughs> at all. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's a scary time, bro. It's a blue light no-go area. Tell me, no go. tell me more. I distracted you from your rather poignant memories there, Bobby. So then, uh, you know, my father passed away cancer in 92. Yeah. And uh, he had like a Batman shirt on. So I like, I like forever, um, you know, think of my father as like, you know, Batman. Kind of like help me with the loss of my father I kind of like like he's like a father-ish figure in a weird way i guess batman is yeah so that character just took on every time i see like a batman symbol or batman i go oh my dad that's uh you see nowadays grown-ups wear lots of um geek reference t-shirts yeah. i've got a cupboard full of them but for your dad to be wearing that at the time do you think he did that mindfully he was thinking Hundred hmm. percent. This is basically if you can think of a lumberjack, yeah, like you know Paul Bunyan. That was my father. He looked like Brendan Gleeson from uh, you know Braveheart. Yeah, he played uh, Mel Gibson's best friend with the big yes. red beard. Yeah, he wore like those flannel old school shirts, blue jeans, and boots. I mean, I don't think he ever wore shorts. So if he did, yeah, he was just that's all he wore. So for he, see him in a Batman shirt, I mean, first of all, what'd you get a Batman shirt that fits you? He was a, he was a, in that regard, he was a real man. Like my old man won't wear denim. He's like, no, I'm not wearing jeans. So he, and he, he puts on like all the, the, the you know, the proper grown up. Oh, the, yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah. And, and much like your dad, he, he's a, he's a worker in New York. He's wearing the jeans. The he's jeans, wearing the open flannel shirt. White shirt, flannel shirt. Yeah, that's it. Well, that's did he wear a vest? In the, uh, he, yeah, in the, in the winter, never really seen with a jacket. He had it, like, you know, he held it, I guess. I never seen him put it on. So the cold didn't bother him. Through, so somehow your dad, knowing your connection with the Batman franchise, got himself a Batman T-shirt. Was this the last time that you saw him when he was had that T-shirt on? Yeah, pretty much. Oof, Bobby. There's people, odd as he's driving down the road. Yeah, he's man. Probably, he's probably welled up, bless him. Um I nearly am as well. So then the game, was the game out before or after your father passed? No, he got me the game. I had the game, yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. And how? And how... Oh, I love the game. I you still it was, love it uh, now? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it still plays good to this day, despite my love for it. You know, I can look at it as a technical point. It, I still, the, the wall jumping is good. I thought the level designs were good. I mean, you had to be really good at the game to do certain things, like especially slide off a wall and jump another wall and timing. Yeah. But you have unlimited continue. You just have to start back from the beginning of the level. Right. So if you played it enough, you know, you'll get it. Like anything, really, you practice that, you know. Question. I th- obviously, for your po- if people don't know, obviously, of you, Bobby, you are a, you're a, very esteemed podcaster now you've got your own show called bobby's world podcast mm-hmm. um and you, you're very very skilled at games you make me look like a, a toddler smearing jam <laughs> and cheese puffs across a controller while you're eloquently performing double back flips and hacks and <laughs> slashes um but i know that on one of your episodes of bobby's world podcast you went through all the different batman games now there's a batman game i played Mm-hmm. You've probably played it on emulation. I'd like to know your thoughts on it. It was based on the 1989 movie Batman. 
mm-hmm. and it was for the Atari ST and mm-hmm. Amiga. And it was a game where you can tr- you had a, a platforming section. Uh, the first level was Axis Chemicals, mm-hmm. um, and you could fire your batarang and climb up, or the you know the bat grapple. And then the next level was an into the screen driving game, uh, driving section where you drove the Batmobile down these sorts of scrolling roads and you used the batarang to turn corners. And then towards the end of the game, you had to solve the Joker's puzzle by working out in the Batcave which pharmaceuticals were the ones that held the Joker oh, yes. X formula yes. in. Now, that's the Batman I grew up with. Is that massively different from the Batman on the Genesis, which I don't own, stroke Mega Drive? Yeah, super different. Is Basically, the, the Batman, based on the movie from the, for the Sega, or the Mega Drive, it's just Batman like on Nintendo yeah. with better graphics. And there's a there there is a driving section and there's a batwing section to shoot. In the in the batwing section on the Atari Stroke Amiga version, you had to use the front claw to cut the balloons. Yeah, you cut balloons and you shoot things down as well. Yes. but you know with 16 bit graphics, that's all. I think but it, that, there's no uh, like puzzle wise like that. That's pretty cool. I, I that was really hard because if memory serves, it was randomized as well. So it wasn't to say you if you learnt it. Because there was, you definitely died in that game and had to start from the beginning of the game again. And mm-hmm. I'll often get through to that section. I'm pretty sure it's randomised. So you put in lipstick, men's deodorant, and you know, some other form of yeah, cosmetic, movie, yeah. and it would be like eh, that's not it. And if you got it right, if you got to there with like one life and you blew it, you were back to the beginning again. Oh, for ages, you know, I loved that game, but at the same time, I hated it. That first level. I played more times than I even care to remember. <laughs> yeah. Is uh let's what's next? So then I would say um Castlevania. On the NES? Yeah. Um I like this game because as a kid, like even at four or five, my aunt would babysit me. So my aunt was pretty much a young adult. Like I would say she's twenty years old, so she was twenty five at the time, or maybe even 24, whatever, she's 20 years older than me. Yeah. So she would, she would babysit me a lot. My mom and dad went out, and then, or they both had to work, whatever was in school. So I would watch horror movies with her. And I think I watched The Exorcist at like six years old. Wow. I watched The Fog, Halloween, stuff like that. I would kind of get scared, but then she actually showed me The Fog and the actress, Jamie Lee Curtis. And yeah. she kept pointing her out, pointing her out, pointing her out. And then we watched Halloween, and she told me it's the same actress. Yes. So this is like a this is like a movie, you know. And I was like, oh, so she, it's not real. It's like no, it's not real. Everything is fake. And then I don't know. I've been a hard fan ever since. So this was like up my alley. It's all the classic. My only gripe with side scrolling Castlevania, and it might be again me being a, a three year old kid in in deference to your almost emperor like skills. It's awful hard. Oh, it's super tough. But you can very spam the bosses. Like, you can kill Dracula in 10 seconds. If you just get the holy water and just stand there and keep chucking holy water. He can't even move and he he just dies. (laughs) Those are things I learned as as a kid. I don't think I ever beat it. I beat it as a teenager. I had to go back. Even my father had a time, hard time beating it. But... As you realize, like, oh, okay, so it's programmed. It's only going to do this and this and this. So if, what if I just throw some holy water? He can't really move. He's still getting hit. I beat the game. I also learned shortcuts. Like if you're certain levels or there's steps, if you just get hit on purpose, you'll bounce mm-hmm. back and up. And you can just skip the whole right side of the level and just go up the staircase to the next section. Sounds like me on Final Fantasy thirteen. I'll yeah. dodge that guy and just ignore him. 100%. If yeah. you could do it, I mean... Because it's really it's, it's it can get really tedious after a while playing it. So some of these old school games are just too frustrating sometimes. Yeah, it's not something to. I mean, yeah, twenty five years ago, did we play it more because it felt cutting edge, or however many years ago it was that we were playing NES or eight bit systems? Did we play it because it was we felt like it was cutting edge at the time, or did we? Because I look back at some of those older games, and in my mind, I remember thinking, "This is not me playing a cartoon." But you look at it now, and it's like mm-hmm. oh, it's a bit ropey. Did we feel like we were surfing the white hot edge of technology at the time, or did we? 
did our mind stitch together to more to that game than was actually there? Yeah, I definitely agree. Like certain Nintendo games, you can look at, okay, it's decent, it's Nintendo, no problem. Certain games are like, oh boy, I thought this would look good, but this is not good. Like that's why I think the Super Nintendo and the Sega Genesis, they will always look better to me than some of these early PS1 games. Mm, because you go of... back now and you're like, oh boy, I mean, everything's just a... literally at the time it looked like a person. Yeah. But now when you're playing it, you look like, okay, everything is a box. Her head is a box. Her ear is a box. <laughs> you know? Her arms are, a... it's just a bunch of boxes, really. And the cutscenes yeah. were awesome. But the game, when you look back at the game, like, oh, dude, really, it's just a bunch of boxes put together. So I, uh, my math is terrible, Bobby. Does that leave us the last game or is there two more? No, just three more and we're done. Three more. Okay, right. Give it to me. So I would say The Legend of Zelda. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, yeah, two more. You're right. The Legend of Zelda and Contra. So Contra, by default, is your favorite yeah. NES game. 100%. And does that have, did you play that with your dad? Yes, I did. Uh, many, many times. Um, he got very frustrated with me because I kept dying. And then he taught me a really strange lesson in patience. Because <sighs> in the le- in level three, it's a waterfall level, okay? So you can't really, you have to be in sync with your partner or take turns jumping on the platform. If he's on the last platform and you jump up, he can die. And my man must have died way too many times to get so frustrated, Okay. I'll do the cleaner version of the story. Okay. He took me to the bathroom. Yeah. He wanted to take a dump. Yeah. We well, yeah. we could call that a number one in the UK is okay. is what we really would, yeah it's what we'd call a we, and a number two. Oh, number two. Yeah, that's what, is what two, we would yeah. refer to. Yeah. So yeah. he normally he took I you say in there. I say dropping a deuce, but I don't know if anybody knows that over there. Wrapped up like a deuce, <laughs> yeah, in a so, runner in the so, light. <laughs> so he was taking a dump. Close the door. And then he begins to read the Reader's Digest, which apparently is just like a news, small little news article, you know, handheld size magazine. Yeah. And he's yeah. reading this thing. Bro, I'm, t- I'm like in tears. It stinks so bad. And wow. I'm like crying. Can I get out? What's going on? He what, do you let me think, out. what do you think caused his number two to smell so strongly? Do you think it was like what he ate? What was his staple meal, Mr. Bro, whatever, whatever my mom made him, he ate. Wow. He cooked too. He, he actually told my mom how to cook. You think while he was cook. out, he was he was like going to like restaurants and roadside diners and things, or do you think he ate what what Mumsy Mumsy made for him? No, he would eat. He he ate everything. He wasn't he, scared of food, so whatever it was, <laughs> steak, lobster, something crazy, like he eat anything. Okay. Pasta, veal, didn't matter. He ate. But it. either which way, once that had been digested by his his rather um, seemingly oblivious body no it was um, it was unbelievable like, the exit strategy for that was was pretty horrendous yeah so uh, actually, what, i was in tears years crying old, you're crying in trying to get out my mom is laughing which i don't think it's funny at all i'm about to die here okay and he's he reading this paper like he's ignoring me, which she was very good at because i was a very annoying child and i said listen i gotta get out of here i'm uh, you know can we leave He's like, I want to teach you about patience. I'm like, first of all, what is patience? He's like, you can leave when I finish the article. And I'm like, what's an article? I don't know what an article is. So he read it. <laughs> seemed to me like I was in there for five hours, but it could have been a few minutes. I don't know, right? Then all of a sudden, he told me to turn around, took care of business, and we left. And I was in tears. So he told me, he said, listen, you see what you did there? And you waited for me to finish my article? That's what you have to do in the waterfall level. You have to wait for me to meet you so we can jump together. My goodness. And we can pass this level together. This is... All right? This is and, life lessons. Yeah, bro. And it was real. I'll never forget this, okay? Like, sometimes you can still smell a whiff, even at this age. And I don't know, a couple of days later, like we, we managed to get to the third level. We did it, but we died in the fourth level. He could beat the game. I, I couldn't beat it with him. All of a sudden, he came back from work with like a piece of paper. Mm-hmm. And he put the code in. And we each had dirty lives. So I don't know 
Where do you games? think? What's the origins of that piece? I of don't paper? know. I don't know. I don't know. I remember one time he was cursing at Nintendo. Nintendo had a hotline back in the day. If yeah. You don't know. And he was playing Castlevania Two. Now Castlevania Two is super strange. There's things in that game to get through levels that you would never know, either because it's lost in translation or just so obscure. So I remember he called the Nintendo hotline, cursing at the people in his deep voice that he can't get to the next level because he had to go to some level, duck in a corner, wait for a friggin' uh, like a tornado to take him to the next part of the game. Who would know that as a child? Who? That's, that is ridiculous. So I don't know if he called Nintendo or there was somebody maybe a little younger on his team that played and gave him the code. I don't know. Well, I'll never know. Wow. But that was the Konami code. That's, that's the first time I ever seen a code in the game. And we beat the game with every life. So that was awesome. Let's just say I could certify that I'd found out there in the wild so by picking through your trash and using mm-hmm. the, the ability to time travel, had found that piece of paper with your father's writ- handwriting on of that Konami code. How much would you pay to get hold of that? Whatever, man. I framed that bad boy. That would be awesome. It, that would be amazing. I okay. just framed that. Yeah, that'd be forever in my house. Any any litter pickers in New York that want to dive, I don't know, what, 16 feet down at the landfill yeah, site in New York? That. Yeah, you, good luck with that. It's a needle in a haystack job. It's not impossible. If it survived, it should be there. You know what it looked like? If, imagine like a small little like receipt yeah. rolled up into like a like a scroll, and then he unscrolled it with his little, it looked like a little fortune cookie. Oh, wow. <laughs> I mean, it was a tiny piece of paper. He actually got it from the, you know, like your jeans have like a little coin pocket. Yeah. That's where he pulled it out from. <laughs> Little coin pocket. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was so odd. Like, you can't find regular paper in your job. That's iconic. I guess So not. that's what we'd call the 8-bit era yeah. line drawn. Are you 16? Are you doing Genesis and SNES as two separate top 10s? Yeah, two separate top 10s. Oh, I can just go through them. Holy moly. Give me, give, me the, give me the SNES top 10. All right, here we go. I've better go order. Boom. Yeah. Ready? Yes. Lisa Dragoon. Uh, Beyond Oasis, yeah, Castlevania Bloodlines, Comic Zone, Contra uh, Contra Hard Corps, Gunstar Heroes, NHL '94, Splatterhouse Three, Streets of Rage Two, and Zombies Ate My Neighbors. That's on Genesis. Yeah. Okay. So, like yeah. I've been playing Zombies on the Genesis, just called Zombies. Oh yeah, or, or for you, for you. Yeah, I thought it was in the States as well. Obviously, on the SNES, it was called Zombies Ate My Neighbors, but on the Genesis, at least here in the UK, I had it on the SNES growing mm-hmm. up as a kid, and it was called Zombies Ate My Neighbors. On the Genesis, it was just called Zombies. Same art style, probably not as good as the SNES version, but uh, graphically, but played exactly the same. Yeah. Me and uh, James, the work experience boy, played through that the other day, and we were well, not through it. It's but... fun, right? Yeah, it's a little bit frustrating, yeah. a little bit like your yes. dad had the experience if mm-hmm. someone sort of off camera, it kind of drags it down a little bit. Yes. You're like, you need to come up to my area. Exactly. Now, you so know what? Progress. What modern game does that? That was annoying to play with? Uh, okay, Dead so. Nation on PS4 and Xbox One or Xbox. Oh, I've not played that. Yeah. It's a zombie game, it's a top down uh, bird's eye view. It, mm-hmm. It's a two player only. You could do it, you know, couch co op or online, whatever. Yeah. And there's a, if you go too far apart, a, a circle will like encompass the map, and you're yeah. stuck there. So if you're getting chased by zombies and you're running away, and I'm on the bottom of the screen shooting them, I can get caught, or you can get caught if I move left. You have to kind of work together. I hate games like that. Yeah, that is. Like, why, why couldn't you just you know, let the map go a little bit or just do a split screen if I got too far from it? There was one other game on that list that jumped out to me. Obviously, okay. Castlevania Bloodlines we knew as... It had a different name here, but I can't... Oh, what was its name? Either which way. Again, mm-hmm. that's that's a little bit different to normal Castlevania because that's a little bit more of a, a... I would say a button masher, but I don't want to say that. But it's it's a very unique play style on the Genesis compared to its SNES counter colleagues. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think we called it... What, did you, what was the game you... What did you call it? Bloodlines. Bloodlines, yeah. Yeah, I'll have to come back to you on what that was called. Uh, what was the game before that? Beyond Oasis. I think for you guys, it was the story of Thor. 
The Story of Thor. Yeah, that was yeah. a good game. We got a sequel mm-hmm. on Saturn, if memory serves, called The Story of Thor 2. Oh, really? Yeah, so if you've got some emulation for the Saturn, you should probably look that one out. Oh, I have no the idea. Story. Um, just give me that top ten again, because I'm sure there was another one that jumped out to me, and I was like, oh, yeah, I want to talk to him about that. Alisa Dragoon. Yeah. Uh, Beyond Oasis, Castlevania Bloodlines, Comic Zone. Comic Project. Zone. Comic Zone was awesome. Comic Zone is an incredibly beautiful looking game. It and, really and the was. idea of the hand coming in and you jump in, you know, the artist's hand coming in, drawing you. I was right up my alley. Then you being able to sort of jump across comic panes. Mm-hmm. I do believe the game's recently celebrated its, what, 35th anniversary or something like that? Or 30th anniversary? Well, it wouldn't be 35th. Well, yeah. it be 30th anniversary or 25th anniversary? Something like that. Yeah, they, re- they release it on the PS4 and Xbox too. Really? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I might get that. I don't I like know if it's still there, though. but it's there. It's, it's in the PSN store or the Xbox. Oh, store, fantastic! Yeah, it was pretty cool. They did a good. I mean, it looks a l- slightly better. I was not remastered; it's just like a port. Mm. That's all. But it's still like if you never had the chance to play. Correct it, me if bad. I'm wrong. Hard game. Mm-hmm. Do you think it was oh, a hard game? Yeah, definitely hard game. Especially towards the end, it got almost to the point where it's like ridiculous. Yeah, agreed. you really had to know your combos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you punch, and, punch, punch, kick, kick. No, you had to do jump, kick, sweep, whatever else you had to do. One one thing I noticed that's missing from that top 10 you give me of Genesis, mm-hmm. there's no, so that's your all-time top 10, but there's no, there's no strike series, no desert, jungle, or urban strike. They're off the table. Yeah. There's no, I have, no, like, I have four no honorable mentions. Oh, okay. Give us those. Sonic 2. Yeah, oh, yes. I got uh, Sunset Riders. Yeah. And Wings of War. Wings of War? Tell me about Wings of yeah. War. I forgot it was, it, it might have been called something else for you guys. Basically, it looks like an angel with a machine gun. And, oh, right. Um, that was me thinking it was a World War it, One. It's definitely, scene, yeah, like it's pronounced, well, it's spelled W O R, war. I don't know how to say it. Oh, right. But, okay. Uh, it's, it's, it's a shooter. Set up, a, set up a spaceship, you're a little angel with a gun, and you shoot all types of aliens and technology and actually kind of hard i i only beat it a few times it's it really really hard but i just always thought it was like of all the shooters i played i don't know this one just stuck to me for some odd reason ever i'll, the I'll never forget it yeah it's weird ever the pro so this and nhl 94 obviously an ea game but no road <laughs> rash 2 nothing like that no i probably of all the games on this list i played nhl 4 i mean thousands of hours on this game NHL 94. Now, I was playing Retro Gamer Thomas came to the exclusive site and we played some games together. You know, yeah, on I'm his, jealous, man. On his visit. And we played the original NHL, which was just the world teams. But if uh-huh. memory serves, NHL 94 had the state teams as well, didn't they? Or the city teams. Yeah, it, had, it, had, uh, it was fully licensed. So it had names and teams. Wow. And it, uh, it, NHL PA 93 just had the uh, names, but the cities. No team names. Mm. And then the original NHL just had the teams, no players. Yeah. So the only reason why they were able to do that was because they, EA promised no fighting in NHL 94. You can't fight. Really? Yeah, no fighting. They didn't want none of that because at the time, that era of hockey was super brutal. Mm. And they, the NHL didn't want to keep sponsoring that. It was a violent game. So like in 93... You can beat up somebody, and if you hit them hard enough, they fall to the floor, and little pe- uh, blood comes behind their head and knock them Ooh. out, which was awesome, right? Yeah. 94, I mean, you can hurt them, but there's no blood. Okay, a little bit like more combat on the snet. <laughs> exactly. So there's no... I mean, we, I think you mentioned that there's going to be um, there's going to be some arcade games in there, but there's yeah. no... I mean, I'm trying to tell you my top 10 here, but you know, it's it's your day to shine. No, man, do it. I love top ten. Uh, amazing. Yeah. I'd have NBA Jam in there, like you. I'd have. Streets I love NBA Rage. Jam. Um, NBA Jam on the thirty two X is is something special to behold. But we class that as the Mega Drive Straight Genesis mm-hmm. anyway. Um, Streets of Rage, Castlevania is pretty good. Comic Zone, Desert Strike, Sonic Two. Hmm. I've got a real soft spot on the 32X as well for super, um, Star Wars Arcade. Yeah, that, that was good. 
I that, like that that's one. that's I mean it's not technically that amazing on there it's a pretty bare bones port of it but it's it's a fantastic game yeah um why else do we play quite a lot uh, Bomberman the Mega Drive Bomberman which, oh yeah that was fun which which is really fun it's it's not as good looking as the SNES version but it plays just the same mm-hmm. so speaking of SNES yeah hit me up with your top 10 SNES Bobby all right here we go we got the Adventures of Batman and Robin oh yeah uh Batman that was Return. on Genesis as well though was it not yeah but that was like a running gun it very, pushes very, very Adventures odd. of if memory serves the Adventures of Batman and Robin on the Genesis pushes the genesis as hard if not harder than any game no it there's, does there's it's, some sections later on in there where the floors like almost mode seven in and you're walking into it and it you know it's it's pretty out there the amount of enemies on the screen at one time yes i was like this is, I mean, bro it's very, very oh hard. talking of pushing the genesis you mentioned and i glossed over gunstar heroes oh that was an awesome game wow i played very, that with my sister very oh, expensive forever. game to get hard on hard to get hold of and where i was going with that to get <laughs> very expensive <laughs> game and hard to get hold of not hard on hard to get hold of yeah um nowadays bizarrely i don't know why but it's a treasure game made mm-hmm. by a company called treasure um i, I know they made a sequel but i never i never played a sequel oh no i didn't know about that yeah so, I, th- I don't know what the system is on. i have to look for you okay the that was that i mean that really does that push the Genesis as hard as Batman versus Robin or Batman and Robin? I don't know. But anyway, I get distracted. So we got to the first one on your list, basically. So what's so, there? We got Batman Returns. Oh, yes. I got, uh, now, that's a, that's a Konami. Yeah. A Konami? Mm-hmm. Side-scrolling beat up that makes yeah. the Genesis version look like a Mickey Mouse game, doesn't yeah, it? I was so upset when I got my Genesis. It came with Sonic 2. And I bought Batman Returns because my friend Adam had Batman Returns on the, mm-hmm. on the Super Nintendo. I said, okay, yeah. perfect. I'll have my own. Yeah. And that, that's the first one I put in to my Sega. Oh, God, Bobby. And I feel so. I, I feel said, for I, you now. How many I years old? I was old? pissed. Dude. I was like, what is this? Not, I beat him up at all. And okay, fine. It's a platform. And I'm playing. I'm like, once I saw the gargoyle come to life and shoot fire at me, that really just, I don't know why, it, it enraged me as a kid. That's I know it's a movie, video game, it? but no, I was. That's not in the movie. Oh, angry. Yeah, but the, so what, angry. What harkens back to the SNES version of Batman Returns? Is it quite eloquently... It looks beautiful. It looks amazing. And it quite mm-hmm. eloquently, within the video game context of a 16-bit beat-em-up, it does a good job of following the storyline of Batman yeah, Returns. Yeah, I'm pretty... Yeah, it did actually a very good job of that. Yeah. Batman Returns might be my favourite of the two uh, Keaton movies. Yeah, I don't. I don't say that to upset you, but you know. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I like them both. Really, I think they they both have their own flaws about. It. I think they're both awesome. You know, so, I wish we had a proper third, but you know. Have you? I've, I think I might have spoken to you about this before. Maybe in the episode you did before Tom got caught by the feds, but uh, mm-hmm. in the history of Sonic episode where we first anointed each other on air, but mm-hmm. uh, we talked about Batman Returns on the Mega CD. Yes. Now, like that's that. the same Mickey Mouse game that you were upset by, but it was mm-hmm. actually interspersed with some fantastic driving uh, elements where you're in the nothing like the movie. Don't get me mm, wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but you played through, and it, it, was, it was really great. Now, you can go into the options at the start and choose to play just the driving sections. Or, oh, no way. Yeah, or the driving interspersed by the platform sections. After you've burnt yourself on the platform in sections more than once, you go back in there and you turn it off. There's a fantastic scene as well when you first turn it on where the camera pans in using... Because the Mega CD was actually more of a capable... You see, Sega released the Mega CD and wanted it to be on a par with the SNES's sprite rotational facility. In fact, it was better than that. But no one ever used it because everyone wanted FMV games because... Mm -hmm when they're still in a magazine, they look amazing. Yes. This Batman had a scene where the camera went, the Batmobile came up to the screen and the camera sort of went into the cockpit and then through the steering wheel gap to zoom in on key. Oh, wow. Face, all in pixel art, all, sc- all sprite rotation. Then it looked, it looked incredible, Bobby. Oh, that'd it really be awesome, did. Dude. Yeah. 
next time I'm up in the retro room, I shall pop it in and send you a clip of that oh, scene. Dope. Yeah, that'd yeah. be awesome. Thanks. So you can enjoy that. Um, so Batman Returns. So we've got okay. to be. This is going to yeah. take a while. I got Contra 3. Yeah. Uh, Final Fight. Yeah, oh, yeah. The Legend of Zelda Link to the Past. Uh, Super Castlevania 4. Yeah. Super Mario World. Yeah. Uh, Turtles in Time. Oh, great game. You see, you didn't have Hyperstone Heist on the Genesis, but you got Turtles in Time. Yeah, I liked it, but I honestly played this more for some okay. reason. Okay, all right. Um, I got Exo Mutant Apocalypse. Yeah. I have Excalibur 2097, which is oh. basically their, ver- uh, their version of Strider. Yeah. Very similar game. And I got Wild Guns. Wild awesome. Guns. Yeah, yeah, what's the story with that? That seems to ring a bell. It's like a cyberpunk western game. You play as two characters. It's uh, I don't even know what kind of genre this is. I, I made like a rail shooter maybe, but like you're a third person. You see your character. You can go left and right. Uh, your enemies can come onto your your plane, and you can like melee. What is it called? Melee. Melee. melee whatever. Melee. Yeah. You can hit them, or you have. An, I believe melee round. is a French word. Yeah, it definitely is a plan for right? And then in the foreground, you have like a little uh, scope for the gun. Yeah. You shoot, things, you shoot things in the background as you can, you can control the, uh, the gun movement. Wow, a little bit like Terminator 2 Arcade. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh-huh. That's a good uh, wow. comparison. It's pretty cool. Okay. Yeah, I like it a lot. I've got that for the Genesis and the Menace, you know. And I, I remembered it at the arcade and it, you know, it looked like photorealistic Terminators <laughs> coming at the screen. It was like, oh my goodness. And it's you, awesome, right? You look on the back of the Genesis box and they've done their real best to make those little screenshots look as good as the arcade. They really, oh, really did. Wow, you know, this is amazing. Slot it in the Genesis or the Mega Drive, put six AAA batteries in the back of the Menacer, <laughs> turn it on, and you're like, what? What? What is this? <laughs> What yeah, on no, that earth was, is this? That deserved yeah. a mega CD uh, copy of it because that would, would have been able way to better. sprite rotation, would have had uh, better looking animation, better mm-hmm. looking sounds. Yeah. Okay. So that's the Super NES and that's the 16 bit era of your life. Looking yep. at both consoles. Look at you. <laughs> now I have the arcade. Now we're going to go through a dance. Yeah. Now, what was your local arcade called, Bobby, where you frequented as a youth? It was, well, really, it was Nathan's Famous Hot Dogs, which is like a big hot dog thing in New York over here. Okay. But is Nathan, that franchise the, still going? It's still going strong, yeah. Nathan's? It's, honestly, it's um, an amazing. If you come to New York, you have to have Nathan's Hot Dogs. You have to take me there. Yeah, we will go. Trust okay. me. We'll go to the original spot in Coney Island, too. Oh, we have to. Yeah, we'll yeah. go there. And then you can see the Ferris wheel from the movie The Warriors, too. The Wonder Wheel. And I also want to, um, I'll bring my glove and my baseball. Uh, I don't know if you've got a bat kicking around, but I'm sure in America, I do. Lying on street corners. Me and you, or well, if you've got a glove, me and you can go like. I got a glove, I got cleats, and a jersey that don't fit. Let's go. Oh. I'll just leave it open, you know, it doesn't bite no more. But yeah, okay. that's, how, that's how a real man <laughs> wears the shirt. <laughs> that's it anyway, yeah. No one wears it done up unless no. you're out on the field yourself. Exactly. To the mighty Giancarlo Stanton or someone of that <laughs> stature, and you're saying, you know, Mr. Judge, yeah, let's, let's do it. But you know, when you're just beating down the street, you have the shirt open. Look at him there. Everything's seen. He's drinking from a Batman mug, which he must have brought <laughs> yeah. from his own apartment because Tom's, Tom's broken glass. Um, yeah, I felt like awkward during I just cuffed. They felt just too fancy for me. So you brought your Batman mug. So I just displayed them because it looks nice, but I don't want to drink out of them. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like the fine china. Like, look at it, but don't eat off it. Yeah, well, anything that you're not comfortable with, just put it in, yeah. like I said last episode, put it in a box, just put it yeah, in storage. Yeah. I'll get Lord Ponsonbury to pay the He's got a lot bill. of cool stuff, bro. So, you know, if I can make it happen, I can, you know. We dabbled on the illegal arts market, so some of those Greek statues are actually from the Parthenon in Greece. Which, which I would love. Yeah, so they're yours. So let, let's let's imagine ourselves back in Nathan's famous hot dogs. So oh, this you particular made me Nathan's, want a New York hot dog real oh, bad. Yeah, it was awesome. So this place was in Yonkers, which is like the town above New York City. Yeah, and they just had a huge arcade attached to the to the hot dog place. 
Okay. I don't know if there was ever a name to the arcade. We just always called it Nathan's Arcade. That's just what all my friends called it. There right. probably was a real name. Now it's gone. A few weeks ago, I went up there, took a picture of just the Nathan's that's been redone to look mm-hmm. nothing like it used to. Oh. And the arcade is gone. Just what? They it's pay. Just, they pay Paradise and put up a parking lot, Bobby, or is it just like there was always it? a parking lot? Now they made even more parking spots with it. Wow. It's, yeah, wow. and it, the Nathan went from like a like a I think it was like a 65, 70 uh, people you could sit inside. Yeah. To like a twenty. It's more like a go, like a driving now, okay. which was weird to have hot dogs on the go. But okay, whatever. Whatever. Works. Surely in New York, though, that's your staple diet. You walk out in the morning, there's a guy on the street corner, he's selling pretzels. You're like, damn, yeah. I'm a self pretzel. So you chew on a salted pretzel as you get in your taxi. You hail a ch- you hail- mm-hmm. This is my. This is an Englishman's version <laughs> of what New York life is like. So you walk out your front door, or knowing you, you're running a bit late, so you dive out your bedroom window. You run down the external fire escape. You slide the ladder down to the pavement. You, you hail a cab. You're like, hey, bro. It's like the first one drives by. Uh-huh. You shout some expletive at him. And like, um, you know, you, you pump your fist in the air and jam your RB into, your, into the gap in your elbow. You're like, you, yeah. buddy. That's it. You. And yeah. then another cab pulls over and he's like, hey, man, you're right. You get in. You're like, you know, take me downtown. You drive downtown. I don't know what it is you do. You're either a construction worker in my mind <laughs> with a yellow hat or, yeah. and your lunch pail. Okay. Or you've got a briefcase and a suit and you work on Wall Street. <laughs> so he takes you to your location. You might sort of, if, if you work on the construction, you kind of clock in. It's like, <clears throat> and your boss, you're probably two minutes late. And some guy's like, hey, Bobby, what time do you call this? Hey, give me a break, man. Damn taxi. Just get on with it, Bobby. We got to get the 34th floor done today. Okay, man. You go up there and you, you're holding a rip. You're, going, boop, 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 boop. you're sweating. You're working hard. You're having to chew on your sandwiches while you're doing it. You, you work in extreme danger as well, like 34 foot footballs up in the air, hanging on a beam, probably walking across, no safety. You've got, nah. like your father, a flannel shirt with your chest out. Sun's beating down on your construction hat. You've got these sort of faded jeans, all dirty from construction <laughs> grime. You come down at the end of the day, you're tired, you clock off. The boss, hey, Barbie, great work today. You know, you give you grief in the morning, but by the end of the day, he loves you like a son that he never yeah. had. You're about to jump in the taxi to go home, and there's a guy on the street, hot dogs, hot dogs, get your hot dogs. Hey, man, you had a hot dog. Hot dog, mustard, no ketchup, mustard, no onions. Ketchup. Go easy, go easy on you know the mustard man <laughs> in the onions go as well it's free give it me you know because onions are free always so it's a great way of pulling yeah. out a meal for no cost it is true uh so you're having that probably hail a taxi you might get the subway might take the walk on a sun's evening you're walking past people uh skins versus shirts in the basketball area like all sweaty yes. and banging into each other baseball caps on backwards there's a couple of guys you know maybe punks with the mohawks on, with a big loud ghetto blaster on their arms, looking pretty menacing, but they see you with the construction hat. The alternative is, you know, Wall Street, you get out, you run in, you sell stocks and shares, giving it all the big lips, you know, ah, oh, no, sell, 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 buy, go sell pig bellies, or whatever it is. Dinner time, you're in some sort of high class restaurant, you know, fine dining. You know, I prefer the construction image myself. That's if I was in New York, that's the lifestyle I would go for. I, uh, and then you get back to your apartment that's, you know, these are proper, in my mind, my, my apartment would be really run down, brick walls sort of thing. <laughs> you got to sort of dodge the um, the landlord on your way in. He's like, don't yeah. think I didn't see you, buddy. Like, where's my where's my rent? Or what do you call, is it rent in New York? Rent, or is, yeah, rent. Where's my rent? Like, oh, uh, mm. listen, man, I, you know, I'm, I'm getting paid Fridays. You said that last Friday. <laughs> I know, man. Forgive my uh, New York accent. It's probably pretty terrible. But, hey, listen, uh, it's not bad. Okay, well, I've, I've got to work It's not on bad. It. When no one's around and I'm in the house on my own, I pad around barefoot, make fists with my toes, and pretend to, pretend to be from New York. <laughs> Quaffy. You've got, to get the, you've got to get the words right. You know, yeah, you've got to I, get the words right. When I, when I listen to Bobby's World podcast, I often sort of listen and then say whatever you said straight after, New York, and then... Quaffy and get all yeah, the you could almost tell where somebody's from with a little uh, the, their dialogue will change. Well, I, like I can be... I can tell immediately when someone's from Long Island. They just have an annoying tone. 
Oh, you know? really? Yeah. It, I don't know. I can't even do it right now. They're like, well, um, oh, you, you, you want to come to my house and look at my house? Like, who says house? It's house. You know, why are you adding so much extra into it? There's no hyphen. What do I call it? You want to come look at my house? House. I mean, yeah, they do. Because uh, Okay, well. And they have like a little bit of a whine. Like, oh my God. And I had to come over here to the supermarket. It's a supermarket. Why do you have to add in? Why are you adding extra? Yeah, come on. Well, I'd want to be from the Bronx just like you. So you're like my hero. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> yeah. If I could almost quantum leap style jump into your into your life, I'd be like, oh boy. <laughs> I'd love Bro, it. We would have been we would have been wild friend, I'll tell you that. Oh well, I'd have been walking around giving it the full rivet is and it's yeah. four thirty four. Hey George, yeah, what's up? You dropped your whatever, your lunch pail. <laughs> Down, I have to get a hot dog. <laughs> uh anyway, enough of that. There's a there's a meander. Maybe we set, uh, maybe once we've both found our feet with each other, we set the next series in New York and me and you are construction workers on the 35th floor. That'd be dope. Sound effects in the back. I don't know. People Everything. get a bit bored. Do, 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 do. Hey, Bobby! <laughs> <laughs> Bring me another girder. <laughs> uh, yeah. So maybe we'll, we'll run a vote on the Discord whether we should yeah. set the next series in, in actual New York. I was thinking this morning, Bobby, mm. best New York superhero. Now, I'm, I'm playing a bit fast and loose with the rules here. Okay. Um, obviously, Spider-Man, yeah. famous for coming from New York. Mm-hmm. But I was thinking the other day, Turtles and the Ghostbusters are pretty much superheroes as well. Yep, yeah, they are. Who represents New York better? The Turtles, Spider-Man, or the Ghostbusters? Hmm. I would say Batman. He's but not from New York, is he? Gotham. Gotham is New York. It's not, though, is it? Well, it, it is, actually. Okay. But well, if I had to pick from those, I would say uh, Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Yeah, I mean, he's been around the longest of them. He really goes everywhere in New York. But yeah, the Turtles have the comic book. One thing you'll find game, about Spider-Man, Bobby, is... I think uh, it's great. He goes everywhere a spider can. Yeah, that's, that's a fact. Spider-Man, Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, we've set the scene. Mm-hmm. We're in New York. We're in okay. Nathan's Famous Hot Dogs. There's 10 yep. arcade, cabinets, arcade cabinets lined up against the back wall. Yeah. Give me their names. Alien vs. Predator. Mm. That that's almost like a Turtles in Time esque sprite, yeah. beat, isn't it? Beautiful. Made by the same people from memory. Yes, great. We game. got Cadillacs and dinosaurs. Oh my goodness! I just love. We got that's on the. Th- I think that's on Sega CD, Mega CD. Oh really? That'd yeah, awesome. I think it is. Yeah, yeah. We have. It was hard for me to pick, but I just picked Dungeons and Dragons Tower of Doom. Yeah, I, it's pretty much the same thing as the sequel, but. That's the first line played, so I picked that one. Uh, Final Fight. Mm-hmm. Golden Axe 2, Return of Death Adder. Yeah. The Punisher. Ooh. Uh, the Simpsons. Yes, that's a good... Is that the one where Marge hits people with a hoover? Yes, it's hilarious. I love yeah. that game. Yeah. Uh, Splatterhouse. Yeah. Teen and Rin and, you know, the, the Turtle game. Yeah, fantastic. Good choice. And then X-Men. So missing from that arcade of dreams is Mortal Kombat 2, NBA Jam. Again, you're not you're not putting the games I would pick. This is this is what this is this is yeah. what this episode's all about. At that era of time and like era, it was just I loved beat 'em ups. I don't know why. I just loved just going up there with this character and wrecking house. Stack up some quarters on the side. I liked shooters and stuff like that too, but I don't know. I've always was drawn to the beat em ups. If they had a beat em up, a new beat em up game, no matter what it was, I I go for that first. You see, when I my exposure to the arcades was either in the local town's laser tag mm-hmm. uh, waiting area, or at seaside arcades, which were these big arcades, normally on piers mm-hmm. um, or opposite in these big halls that were mainly gamblers, two p pushers, but then. Not so much nowadays. They've still got some arcade cabinets in there, but nothing of, of merit because people don't yeah. really make them anymore. Um, but the ones that moved, like Super Thunderblade by Sega, uh, the, air, the 
I've had a brain uh, afterburner that moved. I would always stand yeah. in awe, you know, because they would always have those red uh, balustrades, red velvet balustrades with the gold things around, so you didn't get yeah. too close and get trapped. Ah, my arm! Uh, yeah, those were you cool, know, man. And, and you would look at those, but oh wow, they were the ones that always the the super hang on that was that you moved to. Yeah, moved to the guy. To yeah, those are cool yeah. too. So there's some there's some belters there. So. Just let's break it down. We're going what thirty-two bit era next. So of the two of the of the plethora of thirty-two bit machines that were available, um, two were more famous: Sega and PlayStation, the original PlayStation, yeah. which is what you, I had. You had That's the PlayStation. Yeah. So give me your top ten PlayStation. We got Castlevania: Symphony of the Night. Ooh, such an I got, eloquent piece of software. Yeah, that was awesome. I got Diablo. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I uh, had that. That was pretty cool, actually. I mean, obviously better on the computer, but I think it did a good job. Yeah, definitely. Um, Medal of Honor. Yeah. Medieval. Yes, good game. Metal Gear Solid. Yeah. NHL 2000. Yeah. <laughs> There's a theme here. This guy likes hockey. Loads of hours on that game. I got Parasite Eve 2. Yeah. Resident Evil. Mm. Silent Hill. Yeah. And Soul Reaver, Legacy of King. Oh. That was awesome, dude. Now, I played the slightly higher res version on Dreamcast, but uh, Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver for me is absolutely fantastic. That was, um, that was awesome. for, if memory serves, Amy Hennig, the lady who sort of directed and wrote the Uncharted games, was the lead director and writer and then, for yeah. Legacy yep. of Kane Soul Reaver. You can tell. Absolutely peerless game. This well, is a like, game that needs to get remastered. Definitely. I don't. <sighs> You know we got a sequel on PlayStation 2, don't you? No, I didn't know that. Yes, it did, Bobby. Oh, wow. Yes, it did. Well, I should go find it. Because you I definitely... No idea. I reckon that's... A oh, book, wow. I reckon that'd be a book and change. I'm sure. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I had no idea they had that there. Yeah, that and that... It's, it's all right. carries the story on from memory. Because I think the first game ends from memory quite abruptly and nothing really gets sort of resolved it's kind of like uh, yeah kind of like there was going to be a sequel yeah but the sequel came eventually on playstation 2 pretty mm. much picked up where it left off from memory um i have it obviously you've got an ntsc machine so even yeah. if i posted it to you it'd be nothing more than a coaster yeah yeah um what was the first Metal Gear Solid age? Most of those games that you've picked have actually oh, probably they, aged quite well, yeah. but Medal of Honor, I would say, looks a bit ropey now. Yeah. I mean, when I first played that opening scene, it was just like a friggin' movie, bro. I was hooked. I thought it was really good. Now it's like, mm, not, not so good no more. There's lots of corridors that aren't corridors where you're walking down French lanes with high sort of hedges that really might as well be a corridor and a castle for all intents and purposes, right? Because, yeah, no, it's true. That, that was a limitation of the system. But yeah, at the time, it was a big game. Um, Even Metal Gear, you're like, oh my God, this is all... But now, playing it now, you're like, oh man, this is really, this is really rough. The, the top-down view probably not aged that well but when you go first person and you look at all the 3d realized assets you're like this is pretty good this game still looks incredible some Mm -hmm. of the textures and bits and bobs but you know we know hideo can extract some because metal gear solid 2 which we maybe might get to i don't know Mm -hmm. looks equally as fantastic when you when you get down look at the fine details on some of the props around the set um just give me that top 10 again we got castlevania symphony symphony of the night yeah diablo yeah of honor yeah. Medi- medieval. Yeah. Metal Gear Solid, NHL 2000, Parasite 2, Resident Evil, Silent Hill, and Soul Reaver. Now let's talk about Resident Evil for a minute. Mm-hmm. I had that game and I had it when it launched and I thought it was absolutely brilliant. If memory serves, yeah. I think over here we had like a special PAL box, you know, it had mm-hmm. PlayStation in grey plastic down the side, but you got like um, single CD versions of the game. Yeah. Um, like a was, regular jewel case or like a CD. Yeah, exactly that. But I think Resident Evil came in a double jewel case over here. Some games released in the UK in these double jewel cases, very much like your jewel yeah. cases, but if you got like a CD, uh, a game or a, a soundtrack or a, an album that needed two CDs, it came in the double jewels that were yep. 
they lived on both sides of the uh, pond, Bobby, as yeah. we call it. Yeah, Metal Gear had, I think, two CDs. Yeah, very much like that. Resident mm-hmm. Evil, from memory, had that. And, um, yeah, I played it. And it was one of those games where my dad walked in and he was like, oh, this looks all right. Uh, you know, the, the pre-rendered backgrounds looked, at the time, peerless. Yeah, like now yeah. they're like, ooh. And, mm. and, the, and the actual um, animation work and texture work of the yeah. character. Even mm. the controls are like, oh, boy. Everything yeah. up is forward. It's kind of for a kid, for someone new to video game playing this now, they would just not play it. No, there's no not, way. They not play at it. all. No, no way. The and in a way, horrible. that control input method made it all the way through to Code Veronica. Isn't that crazy? I know. But That's... once I'd got, I've played Code Veronica recently, and once I got yeah. used to it, once I got used to it, I think because we're because we because we're older, maybe. Like my brother, he tried it and he just gave up. He just, what? it's too frustrating for him. To really? Move. Yeah, he can't. He's like, it's annoying. He's so used to everything left, left, right, right, where mm. you have to like turn around and go, uh, 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 you know, to make a left turn. Or... Well, that's a shame. Because I think yeah. uh, out of all the, out of the one, two, three in Code Veronica, I'm going to lump Code Veronica into that with the tank mm-hmm. controls. Code Veronica looks fantastic still. No, it does look Because good. they went the with the spine work over all of it. Yeah, it looks awesome. Yeah. Okay, so that's the original PlayStation probably covered in in relative speed. Yeah. What what was next? What was the system that replaced the PlayStation in your house? PS2. Okay, right. This was now, tough, but I just broke it down to what I really played loads and loads and loads of time in. So coming up first, Barbie's Horse Adventures. So we got... <laughs> <laughs> we got... God of War. Okay, yeah, okay. fantastic. Grand Theft Auto Vice City. Yeah. Gun. Gun. Gun was good, dude. Oof. Well, I got good. Mafia. Yeah. Manhunt. Yeah. Uh, the Punisher. Uh, Red Dead Revolver. Uh, Silent Hill 2. Yeah. Resident Evil 4. And X-Men Legends. But I have four honorable mentions. Well, let's let's just let's just slip back to Gun. Now, yeah. have you played that recently? Mm, no, not no, not this. I would say not. I would say two, two, no, three years maybe. I showed my brother it three years ago. He actually yeah. bought it when he played it here in my house. Did he? Because he feel that game's he, not aged very well. Not really, not really. But he overlooked it. But the story is cool. The story's great. I like the story. That's yeah. what I got me to the game. The getting the just Thomas seeing, Jane did the the voice. Really? Mm-hmm. Seeing gold just as an outcrop that you go and like press A to mine was like, oh, I just wish it was a bit better than this. Like if you found an abandoned mine and could then go in it and hack for mm-hmm. gold, that make more yeah. sense to me. The the sort of shooting mechanics and bits and bobs are willing to let slide. It, it's not aged terribly well, but it, I feel it's aged better than the Rockstar inherited from either Capcom or Konami. I can't remember who did it originally. They bought the rights to Red Dead Revolver off another brand, and there was a lot of the assets that they reused that were already yes. done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was Red Dead Revolver. That's how they got the... Uh, That's how they got the franchise. They actually bought it from Gunsmoke. Gunsmoke was going to make a sequel from Capcom. Yeah. If something didn't work out, and then it was a. Uh, who was the company you just said? Rockstar. Rockstar, yeah, right. I keep thinking of Rocksteady. Rockstar actually, I don't know if it was Rockstar or one of their other little companies, bought it and tried to update the game. Mm-hmm. Showed it to the director. He's like, no, I don't like the way this is looking. Can we do something like this? You know, less arcadey. And that's mm-hmm. how they came out with Red Dead Revolver. Yeah, because I feel out of the two games on PS2 or Xbox, because both games were on the original Xbox as mm-hmm. well, both games... Gun holds up better, but both games have aged quite well. Yeah. No, quite badly, should yeah. be the word I'm looking for. Yeah. Um, give me those PS2 top 10 again, because there's some others I wanted to pick out and needle you on. We got God of War. Yeah, Photo Vice City. Now Vice City, you picked that over San Andreas, whereas I always found San Andreas to be the much. Obviously, GTA Three came out, which I had a soft yeah. spot for, and then Vice City came out, which was was good. But San Andreas was not only so massive in scope, mm-hmm. 
beggar's belief that it actually fitted on the PS2. Obviously, you can imagine the Xbox using its hard drive and other bits and bobs, but on the PS2, yeah. it ran off disc mm-hmm. while streaming music for the radio simultaneously. I mean, that, that was a feat beyond all feats, and it looked amazing. And they'd actually managed to refine and insert RPG elements that gave you real ownership over CJ, the main protagonist. Char- character, yeah. Which the I never why... felt for Vice City. The only reason why I didn't pick San Andreas was I never played San Andreas. Oh, really? Believe it or not, I have it. My brother loves it. But I think he likes Vice City more because I like Vice City. Because he likes the music and stuff. But I think in reality, he would pick San Andreas. My biggest biggest gripe with Vice City is the remote control missions. I hate them. I don't know why they did that. They were very annoying. And they're not easy either. No, they are not. I mean, you can hit a brick wall one of the, those games and that'll add. Yeah, that can make or break your, your playthrough. It will, it'll also add hours. If you don't yeah. get it first time, you're adding hours to your play timer yep. just to do those missions. And they are... Oh. It's the controls, though. I mean, no excuses, Rockstar. Those, the controls for those remote control sections are Because terrible. I know they, they re-released it for the PS4 with the trophy system. Mm-hmm. I have no interest in this. Because I know no. I probably ne- I would never even try to do this. There's no way. That's for me why San Andreas is still playable today, and I love putting it on every now and then, picking up the save. Yeah, the I, should, I should play that. Yeah, the gang wars, the the the, the story, the locations. It's very much GTA Five, but better. I never bonded with GTA Five. I started that game numerous times, and been like, nah, I should love it. I like yeah. the lifestyle aspects of it, but for me, GTA 4 is is the better game. I like the character. I like the setting. It's New York, of course. I can pretend mm-hmm. I'm a construction worker, <laughs> get a cab in the morning, you know, get a hot dog, get a pretzel. Uh, <laughs> okay, so God, I want to talk to you about God of War because obviously God of War is a, is, is a big franchise now because of God of War 4 yeah. getting all its plaudits yeah. and all that and sometimes I think that maybe God of War gets a slightly bigger pump than it sometimes deserves on PS4 it was a great game and it's certainly a, a fitting way of moving the franchise on from the Greek tragedies that it, it was founded on Yeah. now I, I never got God of War day one on PlayStation 2 so mm-hmm. kind of missed what I would call or what we hear at the Unofficial Controller Podcast called the hype train. Yeah. So in a way, I always look at it through the lens of like, mm, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's interesting. God of War 2, fantastic looking game. God of War 1, good, yeah, but it's good, looks yeah. a bit ropey at times. Mm-hmm. I would say 2 is the better game. Yeah. Obviously, but I picked 1 on because that's what got me into it. So God of War 1, set the scene. Did you get that? Were you on the hype train? Did you get that? Did you read the previews and day one? As you soon got as it? they said Spartan Warrior, it didn't matter what I, what I said after that. I was going to get it no matter what. Does that mean you've played Spartan? Yeah, I think it's just called Spartan Warrior on the PS2, which is like, like a... Total, Total War or something like that, where you play as Achilles and whatever? Yeah, I think it is, yeah. Yeah, I have that. Yeah, I love that game too. That's, is that as good as God of War? Mm. No, I I don't know. I I think no, I like God of War better. If okay. I had a pick between the two, I'd pick God of War. Yeah, but it's the not, other game is not bad at all by any means. What was that? Was that Jay Z's Ferrari driving by? Uh, yes, it was actually out of his private garage. He's got just, he's got Beyonce in the seat next to him. Right through the speed bump, Tom built just right over it. Didn't matter. Jay Z's got money to buy yeah. six million Ferraris. He's not bothered, it, is he? Didn't respect speed bumps on his block. No. So tell me, <laughs> God of War, you're there day one, week one, hour yeah. one. You get it home, you put it in your console. Yeah. You have, I think God of War 1 starts at sea with the sea creature. Yeah, you're souped up, you're fighting it. First of all, that whole scene I thought was amazing. Like I mean, that, that was, I was hooked into that. As soon as I put the game in, heard the music, and then after the scene, I was like, wow, this is going to be an amazing game. And then what I kind of was, I was like, I, in my mind, I figured, okay, you're going to lose all your powers. You have to yeah. re, rebuild them. Fine, I did that. But that opening scene hooked me into this franchise. First of all, it was super violent. Yes. I liked, I liked the story of his like betrayal. He's actually going to fight a god. I'm like, how are you going to fight a god? 
you're only a human being. So that aspect was like, well, yeah, they did it back in the day. Why can't they do it now? You know, as far as story wise. Yeah. So the whole story was to me very interesting, even though it's just a typical revenge story. Yeah. I like the way they did it and how they used the gods and how they drew them. And they right. kind of made them, you know, evil, but also good, depending on who you're kind of looking at. Yeah. Agreed. It, it was yeah. a classy franchise and one mm-hmm. I didn't have access to immediately. And I kind of looked over and was like, mm, mm, God of War. And then you play it and you're like, oh, I want to just say this is a mindless button masher that. 100% you know, hack and slash corridor. straight through. Yeah. But at the same token, it's got an element of class that lifts it above. Mm-hmm. It's very easy to scorn and knock those PS2 originals. For yeah. me, I, I don't know why. Oh, and I'm slightly off top. It's God of War, but. Three and Ascension hold a very dear part, uh, uh, very dear to my heart. I think yeah. three looks incredible. And they're great. It is. It's unbelievable. Game. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, n- what's your honorable mentions? I just put uh, Batman Begins, uh, Evil Dead, a fist called a boomstick. <laughs> yeah, good game. Which I lo- I thought was great. Good pick. Uh, Gran Turismo. I forgot what number. I just put the interest. I don't remember the number. Let's say you said four because you're a classy gentleman. Yeah. And then uh, Maximo Ghost to Glory, which was like a spinoff from uh, Ghost and Ghouls. Now, they had a couple of Maximo games, didn't they? Yeah. Was that the first Gen- one? The first one, yeah. Okay, yeah. Now, Maximo was... was certainly a lot more playable than Ghouls and Ghosts. 100%. <laughs> it's still tough, though. Towards the end, it gets kind of like ridiculous, like most of these games back in the day. Yeah. But uh, I thought it was cool. I like the way they did the story and the style. Okay, well, that's there. that's PS2. Next console your own, presumably, was the PS3? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> we got uh, Batman Arkham City. Yeah. I got Darksiders 2. Oh, yeah. Dark Souls 2. Yeah. Uh, not Dark, Dark Souls 1, sorry. Okay. I, that's, I put 2. That's 1. I got uh, Dead Space. Yeah, it's a good game. God of War 3. Yes. Um, we're Fallout. aligned on that. Yeah, we're definitely. I got Fallout New Vegas. Yeah. Far Cry 3. Yo. Mafia 2. Yeah. Uh, Red Dead Redemption. Oh, yeah. And Skyrim. No Oblivion. Mm, no, it's good, but I played way more Skyrim. Okay, uh, Far Cry 3. Why does no one pick Far Cry 2? Far Cry 2 is my favorite. Far Cry 2 was amazing, especially with the, the, the gameplay where like yeah. your gun can actually jam. So you have this whole plan. You can take out this whole fortress. Yeah. Your grenades are dud and your gun jams. Now yeah. what? So I like that a lot. And, I and just that era it. was brave enough to set games in Africa. Yeah, and Far Cry 3 and yeah. um, Resident Evil 5. Yep. A little bit controversial, Resident Evil 5, no doubt. Mm-hmm. But, you know, Far Cry 2 on PS3 and Xbox 360, it still does things that aren't even in Far Cry games now. No, they, and I, I don't know why, because I thought it was very interesting. You have this whole plan, and yes, your, your plan can go 100% fine. But then when your gun jams, what's your plan B? Did you have a plan B? No. Now you're, you know what I mean? Like oh my God, now you think of plan B and whatever you're going to hide, you can't hide now because you don't have to oh, kill yeah, that guy. Now at the top of the show, I said to you, I had MGS4, mm-hmm. Murdered Soul Suspect, and they mm-hmm. were the games I was um and ahhing about. Yeah. Confession. I've also mm-hmm. never played Arkham City Origins as well. Oh, the Origin, oh, the, it's, I like it. I kind of like it. Um, if I had to pick the, the Arkham games, mm-hmm. I would do Arkham City. Yeah. I do Origins, yeah, Asylum, and Night will be last. Not that it's bad. That's just my order. I kind of wow, like Origins. So am yeah, I missing people, out? People think, oh, or, what, was, what was wrong with Origins? Oh, it's the same game. They're all the same game. It's all set in the same city, and you're doing the same thing. So in right, reality, okay. what's different? Nothing. As- okay, asylum, well. you're kind of stuck in like you know the asylum. Yeah. And then once you go to city, you're in the city. You know, fly. Uh, gliding around doing anything but you're doing the same thing in origins and the same thing in night right okay so maybe i should give origins a play is the origins got a batmobile in it that you can use or not not really not really no okay 
Like, what, what I always wanted, and I think Gotham Knights, the upcoming, rock, um, it's not rock st- steady game, but Warner Brothers Interactive, I can't remember who's doing it. Um, mm-hmm. It's got the, what I always wanted was a, a free roaming Gotham City. Yes. Where I could have a bat cave that exited out of the sewers, almost like Batman Returns, into yeah. Gotham City itself. But the game starts when you, unless you save it in the city, you go back to the Batcave every night or every every morning. And you can go up to Wayne Mansion and walk around a little bit. And then you take the secret elevators down yeah. to, to the Batcave. And you, you've maybe got, every night you go out and you can fight crimes like muggers and like very low level stuff. But you've maybe mm-hmm. got some sort of more overarching long form missions where you've like, put a surveillance tracker on a van because you think it's being used by the joker or the penguin and then mm. during the day you're in the back cave and you're kind of looking at this system and you're like okay so it's been there and there let's alfred bring up the information for that company and that company and what's this pharmaceuticals and then you can get in the back car you know the batmobile at night time drive out through oh, the that'd wall be awesome dude. bust out the sewers into so you're taking the vehicle yourself poof, you arrive in gotham you pull the eject button you poof up onto the roof and then you kind of like like getting information on that building and then alfred's like oh the police chatter says there's been an, an armed bank robbery and it's just like some normal joes like low level guys you go down yeah. there and you're like boom 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 you, you kick their backsides as if they're nothing because they're just average you know dudes mm-hmm. and you wrap them up batarang in the wall job done off you go uh, every now and then maybe you know the light will go up and you're like all right big big thing going on and you get to the roof and uh, Commissioner Gordon's like, oh, we, we, we've we've heard about this thing going on. You go down there, and it's like one of the lower level Batman baddies, and you you fight them. And obviously, the big thing will probably take you onto the Joker, the Penguin, or the Catwoman, or Mister Freeze. But you're 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 doing missions as the Detective Batman. That's but no one, no one, and I repeat, no one has done this, and I just cannot figure out why. You know what? You that would be the ultimate Batman game, would it not? You need to take this clip. Yeah, and you just send it to Warner Brothers. I would play this game now. <laughs> okay, I play right it now, even... Bobby. It's going to involve me doing drawings. Listen, and around I would play it in the most basic form of art you can put on PS4. That sounds awesome, dude. I like that idea a lot. I don't know why no one's done that. It's so strange. It seems like the natural progression for the Batman game. And it makes more sense. Like, yes, I'm doing this, this, and that, but now I'm looking into this, looking into that. How does this correlate with each other? Am I wrong? Yeah, I can do all the investigating and go to actually go to the wrong building because I made a mistake. Well, yeah, that vehicle's gone to X Pharmaceuticals yeah. at night. It's gone to ABC Electronics, yeah. and you go look at AB. Maybe you've tagged even the wrong vehicle. You're like, yeah, actually, exactly. Alfred, yeah. you know what? That's a bust. It must be this other far- pharmaceutical company. Which Let's that's going to happen in real life. So You do that, and it's like, yeah, now we know where we're going. And as you go through, you level up, and you, you get maybe as you get different bad guys, they're using some tech that you can be like, Alfred, Mr. Freeze's gun, something I could incorporate into my belt. Work on it. So no problems, Mr. Wayne. You get back and then you've got some sort of cryo sort of batarang that freezes bad guys so you can take them out or, you know, That'd leave the Commissioner Gordon or et cetera, et cetera. So there you wow. go. That, that was my dream Batman game. Yeah, I love it, dude. Maybe one day. Before you and I pop our clogs, that game will come out. Yes. I will, yeah, we got to make that happen. Okay. Well, we'll do our best. Well, did you have any honorable mentions for the PlayStation 3? I put... Uh, Dante's Inferno, mm-hmm. Demon Souls, and yep. Sleeping Dogs. Sleeping Dogs is good. I love Sleeping Dogs. My out of all the PlayStations, I'm going to go on record now and say this out loud. Out of mm-hmm. all the PlayStations, I think the PS3 gets the most use in my collection. Definitely more than the PS4 to this day. I've just put 60 hours into Final Fantasy 13 for goodness sake. Like I find, yeah. I find, you know, from PlayStation 3 to PlayStation 4 and Xbox 360 to Xbox One, the graphics were better, don't mm-hmm. get me wrong, but on a modern TV, a 4K set, you know, a, lot of the, a lot of the pixels get disappeared anyway. So you uh-huh. have a game that looks great. Like, yeah, the textures maybe aren't as great and some of the big open world games look a little bit ropey. Yeah, but for the most part, you're playing a game that could be on. There's some PS3 games and Xbox 360 games 
that properly embarrassed PS4 and Xbox One. They're like, oh, crikey, yeah, that looks a bit good. Yeah. Uh, and, the, you know, the ideas and the interactions and the things that you can do in the game, they're, they're as good, if not better in some cases. And some other games on PS4. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and PS3 and Xbox 360 had an app. I know there's been a lot of games for PS4 and, and Xbox One, admittedly, but there just seems to be an absolute pile of $1, one pound games for PS3 and 360 you can pick up and, and sink 40 hours into without a sweat. That's yeah. a return on investment beyond your wildest dreams. No, I would agree. They have a great library, both those systems. Do. Yeah. So we're now moving on, presumably, on to the PS4. Yes. A lot that of these is... games are multi-franchise as well, so it's yeah. not as though they're locked off. Talk to me about, back before we do, mm-hmm. was Batman Begins on PS2 or PS3 that you mentioned? It was on PS2, wasn't PS2, it? PS2, yeah. Let's rewind, because that, that's just cropped up in my mind. Mm-hmm. Before Arkham came along, this was a damn good Batman game. It was, actually. For its time, they used the darkness, right? They used the fear. Now, uh, Tom... Part. Tom had that game, but he always denies, remembers, he never remembers having it. There's many games that Tom said, I never had that, and he did. Yeah, yeah. It was one of them. I remember going to his house, and he'd be like, look at this. And he, like, descended from the skies and wrapped some guy up as Christian. I'm not wearing a patch bail. And he whipped him up. And I was like, that's actually quite cool. It's not Yeah, I thought it was pretty cool, bro. I actually say it was good. I mean, I'm happy that, you know, they went into the Arkham direction. Mm. But they could have made the film franchise games separate from that anyway. They I don't ever, I don't know why they, I apparently they had the second game done. Yeah. But I think when, when Heath Ledger passed away, they kind of like, mm, maybe we should just end it. You can't really make Heath Ledger look that menacing in, in, in on PS2 graphics. Can you? No, no. I mean, look into the matrix. for goodness mm-hmm. sake. Okay. So, Let's let's uh, let's fast forward in time two generations to the PS4, Bobby. Give me now here. Top 10. I had a huge issue here, so I just really put just I think it's thirteen. I, it's too early to tell. This change, this list can change at any minute because okay. It's well, these are games out. that we've talked about quite often. I'm I'm yeah. sure. So let let let's go for it. Go. So I would say Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Yeah. Bloodborne. Yeah. Days Gone. Oh, God, I love Days Gone. I love that game. So, so much. Super underrated. Massively um, so. I got Diablo 3. Yeah. Put For Honor. Yeah. I put God of War. Yeah. Ghost of Tsushima, even though I'm not done, it's on there. Yeah. We have... It, it's a Days uh, Gone, that is. I think... I know yeah. it got reviews and everyone said, oh, it's a great game, but I actually think the fan appreciation for Ghost of Tsushima goes way beyond... Um. Yeah, what was in the press and written about it. It's fantastic. When you've played it, you're like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that was really good. Yeah, like, really, really good. Honestly. The only other game really this generation that made me feel like that was Days Gone. Yeah, especially... And Red Dead, maybe. The, the second arc of Days Gone, I did not expect it to continue on like it did. No. So, no. that was awesome. Um, I got Sekiro. Yeah. Spider-Man. Yeah, Spider-Man was good as well. I got Mad Max. That was an excellent game. Which people, again, underrated game. I got uh, Red Dead Redemption 2. Yeah. Uncharted 4. And then The Witcher 3. It's really hard for me to make the 10. Only because, like, Diablo 3 and For Honor, I played with my my stepfather. We destroyed those games together. Mm -hmm. Hours and hours on that. And then... Uh, Red Dead Redemption 2, just the storyline, the online, eh. Yeah, no, I mean, and that's probably relevant. That's probably... Yeah. I, I wish they didn't do it because now it's like they just don't care about it anymore. And it's really showing. I'm sure some people have played it, like our own Finster Gamer in the Discord. Mm-hmm. I know he's put a lot of hours into the online and fair play to him. Fair play to him. I mean, if you have a friend, I think it's, I think it's great. At least... A I friend. know, but it... When I played it, it felt but it's like, kinda like there's empty. loads of griefers. Yeah, I actually yeah. watched a documentary on YouTube about a um, the biggest Red Dead Redemption gang, and they have a whole sort of trial system. You're a brown jacket until you get in. One in 100 people make it in. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah I saw someone down on Facebook where you can join. 
you have to have a certain amount of, I don't know, hours played and I don't know what they require. And then you get to roll around, you know, an empty wasteland. But I tell you one thing, in the videos that they shot and this that this documentary guy got invited to meet them and he wasn't allowed into their meetings yet to kind of be outside. But when 32 of them, which I think is the max play account on one server, rolled mm-hmm. into a town, even I was like, and they're all wearing blue as well. I was like, Oof, man, that looks sick. No, it looks, it looks probably it looks dope. Um, but, you know, they're, they're rattling around, as you say, in a world where they must have more credits in game and animal skins mm-hmm. and booze and all that than you can shake a stick at. Yeah. What's left for them to do is nothing. You know, it ended up being very bare bones. Yeah. I, what like I, I, really wanted... Wanted, I wanted a gold mine or the gold rush because I thought that would be something. If they announced, yeah. like, gold found in wherever town or near wherever town, but mm-hmm. only so many squares of the game were up for sale and you yeah. had to kill people or take it, that would create a gold rush. That'd be fun. Or even just just kind of go like arcade-like with the bounty system. Like, okay, here's a bunch of cool bounties. Mm-hmm. You got you and your buddy. Start shooting up, you know, a bunch of gangs and everything. It's like you can walk for, for, a mile, for hours and I never find a hidden gang. And then when you find them, there's like 20 guys and they're dead within two seconds. Yeah. Because you're so souped up with all your cards, yeah. Or then you could do the the legendary bounties, which yeah, they're fun. But how many times can you do them? And then when you do one, you have to wait, I think, twenty minutes to do another one. That's true. So it's just why it's ridiculous. Yeah, in a game that's lacking content, why do they put the cooldown in there? I don't understand what the, what the, what's the issue between if I want to load a legendary bounty and do it again, or do another one right after. So I mean, my brother have to do legendary bounty. We have to wait around for X amount of time to do a basic bounty, which is really some of them. What I the ones I don't like, go to A, okay, search for A, and then find A, bring them in. That's it. Mm. I bring them to the sheriff. I get five dollars, and I move on my way to the next bounty. Yeah, it's annoying. Yeah, as soon as I encountered some griefers, I was like, "There, simp for me." It kind of takes everything I enjoyed about the one player section and walks it through the dirt. Yeah, um, but hey, there you go. Bobby, does that bring us to the end? Sure of does. Your, of your, well, if they don't know you now, Sunbeam. They sure do now. They do now. Now, let's just give them one last chance. Obviously, Bobby's World Podcast is where they can find you. Um, that's your own show. Yes, sir. Chronicles my... underscore gamer. However yeah. many underscores in there. And so Bobby's many. World Podcast also has an Instagram. That's where they can find you on there. And we... <laughs> We implore you everyone to go check out Bobby's solo cast and solo work. Every day he's uploading games, he's platinum games. Got some swores though, it's not maybe for the children. Okay. Well there is some swores for Bobby. Yeah, when he's not on the unofficial controller podcast, he's got some blue words. Not yeah. that many to be fair. Yeah, I try to tone it down. Yeah, I think that uh, for the most part you're you're safe for work. Um now is the time where we in Tom's absence, this is the thing they've all been, you know, we tuned in for this. We've enjoyed Bobby, but now we want you to talk about our stuff on Instagram. And they do that. They do that by going on Instagram, type in hashtag Stingray's boot in the search section. We're doing it now. So you follow along with us as you're listening to it. Unless you're driving orders. If you're driving, mate, mm-hmm. no Instagram for you. You'll have to look at this later or re-listen to it. So we hashtag Stingray's boot, boom. It comes up, there's top or recent. You click recent, and we get to see what the big man's left behind. First in the boot, if you're doing it the same as me, Bobby, we've got Oscat TV. Yes, we do. Now, I think Oscat TV is an American, just like yourself, one of our mm-hmm. American cousins. The big come Comfy couch. couch. My sister doesn't watch the show. Means nothing to me. It's a child show, basically. He's gone all in. He looks like he's got every version of it ever made. I mean, I, I watched it because the main actress, I thought she was kind of hot. Okay. All right. Is that one of those ones that as a child you fancied her because she was like an early teen, but now as an adult you look back and you're like, ooh, shady, or was she an adult <laughs> at the time? <laughs> exactly. Oh, exactly. okay. Yeah. Say no more. Okay. Yep. Uh, Radbash Gaming. Now, all these people have been loyally posting while Stingray's Boot's been on hiatus. Now, I did a special one-off 
listener stingray special. So there, we're going to we're going to give you a little healthy dose today because I think we've been uh, delving through Bobby's mind um, for quite a long time. So Radbash Gaming, what's he got here, Bobby? Oh, got a few things: got the Blob movie, uh, Batman vs. Robin on Blu-ray, Tony Hawk Pro Skater One and Two for the PS4, Adventures for the PS4, and um, Avengers Confidential. Yeah, Cartoon are you going to be getting uh, Avengers or Tony Hawk's Pro Skater? No, I think so. I didn't really play it as a kid, Tony Hawk. So no, I and Avengers had... kind of looks like. Eh. Yeah, okay. Could be good, but I, maybe I'll wait a little bit. Not like I have to get it right now. And what's that Batman and Robin? Looks like uh... it's a t- it's a cartoon film. Okay, it looks like it could be quite good. To be fair, mm-hmm. up next, the loyal Finster gamer. He's a part of our Discord crew. Uh, if you want to join the Discord, just click on the link tree on Instagram or Twitter and it'll take you straight there. Introduce you to all the people that you hear on the show on a regular basis who contribute, and you can too. Oh, talking of contributions, we need to pick a prize. We should have done this at the top of the show, Bobby, but we forget. Oh, yes. Yeah. I'm sure Adam probably thinks I forget on purpose, but I don't. I just get carried away <laughs> talking about video games and boom, before we know it. Well, let me tell you. I can't remember. I had this in mind the other day, and I can't remember the comment exactly, but the person who's the winner this this, uh, month is a contributor called Batmall. Nice. Congratulations. Congratulations, Batmall. Get in touch uh, with my good self, Unofficial Controller Podcast. That's me. Uh, Knock on the door. I'll let you in. We'll show you where you can order your price from, and then we'll take care of the rest, my good friend. Uh, Fince the Gamer, he's got a skateboard, whether that's... Fince the Gamer looks, he's, he's very edgy, isn't he? Last yeah. time I said he was like a Victorian pugilist. <laughs> to be fair, he could be that emo kid who's got like the dangler thing. He's got like a... Cool keychain. He's got his keychain on, on a yeah. long cord. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that says something like Death by Skate or some <laughs> sort of metal band on it. He's got those tucked in his pocket. God knows why skaters have their keys on such long chains, but it's, it's part of the look. Kind of dangerous if you think about it. Yeah, catch that. What if you get caught? That's it, you're going down. Pulled off the board, nasty. Broken shin. Damn yeah. near broke his tailbone, did our Finster Gamer. Anyway, there's a skateboard lobbed down akimbo on a, a rather nice, one would imagine that's a table, not a floor. So he's already feeling the ira of yeah. Mumsy because he's thrown his skateboard that's got outside dirt on what could be a food preparation area. And he's locked down <laughs> Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 on the Xbox One. And because he pre-ordered it, he's got some edgy-looking laces as well, which you can pop into. Stuff. No doubt he wears Vans. 100%. Yeah, pops moves all over the place. I tell you what, he's been a busy boy. Because while he was down the local computer video game shop, he picked himself up a copy of Avengers, the game you said you wouldn't touch with a barge pole. Yeah, and looks like because he pre-ordered it, he got a steel book as well. Well, this looks actually really nice. Actually, the steel book looks, looks yeah, I like beautiful. it. Beautiful. Here's a man who likes his name read out in an American accent. Bobby, who's next? Retro gamer Thomas. He also he, got uh, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, Pro, uh, Pro Skater, but he got the collector's edition. It was Tony really Hawk's cool. Procrastinator, the Pro- game where you kind of <laughs> hang around, not really doing a great deal, but talk about doing it. Exactly. <laughs> He's got the board. Yeah, that looks pretty cool, actually, man. I like it. Yeah, a man who loves a special edition. He got the laces as well. So there's going to be loads of those laces. I'd have to admire the person who doesn't put those laces locked away in a cupboard and say, no, that's gamer collection. I'm going to put those on eBay when I die so the kids can retire. The first person I see walking down the street with those laces in their shoes, I'm going to get down and pray to their shoes like Mecca. Yeah. Not even mucking about. Like, holy moly, you had the guts. Well done to you. Uh, Who's up next? Barber Who Games. Ah, here's a man who's happy. Picked up quite a few. Test Drive Unlimited. Was that on PS3? I don't think it was. I think it was on PS3. I honestly never heard of it. Great game. Absolutely fantastic game. In the early days, a reason to own a 360. The whole of Hawaii, within reason, mapped for you to rip around and own houses on in these awesome sports cars. Well, that's really cool. 
It is really cool. I can't. You arrive as well in a cutscene uh, using in-game graphics at the airport, and you get off, and you've got a car waiting for you, and it gives you a direction on the sat nav to drive to, which is your new garage and home. Oh wow! Absolutely fantastic game. Me and uh, Tom often reminisce about the drive up to the mountainside villa that you own when you get off the airplane. Up next, Boba Loba. He's there with a Star Trek Generations VHS. He knows where to tickle me, doesn't he? He knows the places to touch to get me to elicit a response and mangasm. And he's certainly <laughs> <laughs> a geekgasm. I went with a friend and my parents to see that at the cinema. And I, I loved it. I know it's terrible, but I thought it was great. Um, I wonder if that winter trip to Florida thing is still valid. I love seeing stuff like that. I watched... Um, wow. Winter right, well, trip this to... is 96. That's how long ago that was. That's when it I... expires, the sticker. How, imagine how bad timing it was, and God rest their souls, if you ended up winning that competition and going, and it was the Challenger disaster. Mm. That would suck. That sure would. Anyway, moving on. I probably killed the conversation there. <laughs> uh, Tom wants Res gets in the comments and he's like, uh, "Oh, I've got a, a spare laser disc for this," and I'm like, "I need, I need that." If you're listening and you want to send me stuff, <laughs> please do because I love stuff. I can't move in this house with stuff. I need more of it. Genuinely, um, message me and you can have my personal address. <laughs> <laughs> and if you stalk me, fair play to you. Uh, stuck in the past lane. What's he always does these? I don't know if you know stuck in the past lane. <laughs> I, I follow him. Do you actually? Yeah, I don't he, like know him, no, but he does these great Polaroid shots. This yeah. is why you always say I and like he, them. He writes this little phrase underneath. Mm-hmm. And he's on this one. He's got the Cartridge Family from the Atari Twenty Six Hundred days. Not the best console. No, right? that's no. aged like a corked wine, hasn't it? The Atari. Yeah, really. Um, yeah, great cover art. And That's a fact. The cover art on that games are absolutely. The cover art. I can actually hang some of them up as actual art. Guess what? You have one. I do. That's awesome, dude. Not the actual cartridge, but Gotham Games when they were selling off all their their stuff from their arcade upstairs, mm-hmm. they had some original Atari art in frames. Wow. Like copies of art in frames. And I've got that up. I've got my favorite, which I reminisce about. I played with my uncle when we got babysat, was uh, Pitfall. Oh, yeah. Pitfall's good on that. Um, so next, Radbash Gaming. He's got a smattering of horror. Yeah, some horror, some comic related. We got It, Halloween. We got Candyman, Superman on Sun, Batman Under the Red Hood. Uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, some Dragon Ball Z, pretty interesting stuff. Um, well, we'll do this. This probably marks the the line in the sand of the most recent entries because here's the post from us saying we're bringing the boot back. And we need your submissions if you're yeah. listening now and you're on Instagram. Actually, you know what's funny? I saw. Hold on, something didn't something didn't register because Daddy Zilla posted something. Oh we'll get that is it's always posting. He's got but he's got a uh, It two, didn't come in the hashtag. Two posts down. Um, oh it is two posts down. Okay, I didn't see Radbash that. Gaming got more pickups. He's got Bendy and Ink Machine, which is uh Devin Zilla's favorite franchise from uh, one of his favorites. He's got an awesome looking what looks like Arkham the universe Batman and the Joker. Yeah. Daddy Zilla's got himself a repro little Samson. He's always out on the retro hunt, but he's yet to find himself a real copy. Mm-hmm. But this repro looks real enough to me. It's 20 bucks. At least he can play the game. Yeah. Have you ever played Little Samson? Did you have it back in the day? Never had it back in the day, but I, I played it. Uh, I have it emulated. Is it that great a game? I mean, it's, it's okay. It's just okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm like, if I never played it, I wouldn't be bothered if I didn't. One of those kind of games. Like, yeah, I played it. Coming up next, you're a fan, I'm a fan. Yeah. Mainly, I'm a fan of his hair. Best hair on Instagram. Oh, he's, he's, he's not only a handsome man, and he keeps himself as well. Yeah. Way for thin. Yeah. He looks, 
if I could wish to be any man, yeah, who's that, George Clooney? No. No. Harvey Retro, baby. Harvey Retro. This, this cat's so got he, it. He's he got it going on, hasn't he? He does. If, if he has the best hair on Instagram, he must have the best hair in all of London, England, the UK. He's, no. No. He's on his a hair. higher stage than that. His hair is phenomenal. Harvey Retro's got the best hair on planet Earth. I like it. Yeah. His oh. hair makes someone like me instantly jealous. The way he swooshes. I mean, it's a shame we're not getting a picture of him with his hair here. Did you ever see some of the videos he has done on YouTube? Oh, my giddy aunt. They... Every now and then, maybe it's the air conditioner or a fan, I don't know. Every now and then, just a, like a, a, a nice breeze just catches that hair and really kind of throws it back. Looks like a shampoo advert. Looks absolutely phenomenal. The guy, well, we're not, all we're getting is his fine gripped fingers around a copy of Stuntman for the PS2 and ATV off road. In the background, we see his, what could only be described as almost unexhaustive co- uh, collection of films. Yeah. Because the man, seen. he does a, he does a show called Enigmatic Productions, doesn't he? And yes, it's he a podcast. Mm-hmm. Now, he's a bit more of a horror man then I'm a scaredy cat. Yeah. So he's a bit more of a horror man. You're a big horror fan. Mm-hmm. And they look back at films and stuff. I love it. It's great. I've watched the James Bond one recently and I loved every bit of it. And it's give, I've even been back and watched some of the ones they talk about just because Harvey Retro said. Yeah. Um, up got next. Retro Life 91 with some colorful Game Boy colors. A clear, a yellow, and a teal, I guess you would call that. Yeah, I'd go with teal. It's a word that... The thing is, I've said this before, I'll say it again. To me, there's only so many colours. Red, blue, green, purple, <laughs> black, white, orange. You know, the, the, the standard colours. Yeah. And to a man, that's fine. Yeah, I know what you're on about. Blue, red, yellow, pink, purple, whatever. And then you get a girl walk in, it's like teal, or it's lavender, or it's off-white. Yeah. And it's like, what colour's this? Oh, it's cream. It's white. Mauve. It's mauve. Mm-hmm. It's lavender. Yeah. It's a lesser spotted warbler thrush's throat colouring. Like, what's that? Apricot. It's, what's apricot? apricot. Remember, those, remember, remember that? Remember that? In the 64 box of crayons, you had apricot? Ape, we, uh, nah. Apricot was kind of like my... My peach, my skin tone, apricot. We we call that apricot. Really? Yeah. See if you can say I also apricot. I say it in American style. See if you can say apricot. Apricot. That's how someone from Long Island would say it. Apricot. I'm going to come around my house and watch my apricot crown. Like, I like how you guys say aluminum. Aluminium. It just sounds better, but I can never do it. I'm like, al- aluminum falcon. Aluminum. <laughs> <laughs> I actually like the way you say it better. Uh, yeah. Al- Aluminium. Alu. My old, my old right, boss Try this. Me. Alu. <laughs> Alu. Minium. Minium. Put them Alu- together. Minium. Alu- That's minium. it. <laughs> oh! My <we>, old <laughs> The internet just shot. It's like an American man. My old Alu- boss, would, he called me one day and he was like, oh, Bobby, how's the lift? I'm like, what lift? I was like, it's fine. It's working fine. He goes, no, the lift, the lift. It's not working. I got an email. It's not working. I'm like, Everything is working fine. First of all, what's a lift? And he was like, a lift is the little, we just call it an, ele- an elevator. Yeah. There's, a proper, there's a proper term for one that just goes from the basement to the first floor. Yeah. I forgot the term, but yeah. that's what he was calling the lift. And I'm like, first of all, who sent you an email about this? Because Was he an English guy? You're in England, and yeah. I'm in the building in New York. I don't even know if that's broken. So what connections do you have? Because I had no idea it's not working. What in your hotel did you ever have any celebrities stay? A lot, yeah. What was the what would you call the biggest celebrity that ever stayed in your hotel in New York? To you as a person, we had Sophia Sophia Vergara stood there. We had uh, Magic Johnson stayed oh, wow. there. Um, you know Lucy Liu stayed there, wow. and. You know the guy from The Walking Dead who plays uh, Jesus? Yes. He's, he stood there. And then 
we had, oh, I forgot his name, but it was like super, like we all had to sign papers that we can't even try to photo him or anything. You couldn't even talk to him, which and really in the hotel industry, you're not supposed to talk to, him, to, to them anyway. But sometimes, you know, you get away with it, but yeah. we had to sign papers. I forgot who the actor was. He was an English actor. I don't know what he was doing in New York, but he had a whole crew. Security, they took the whole floor. What films has he been in? Oh, man. I'm trying to remember, man. I really have a brain fart right now. Okay, well, we'll come back to it. I'll come back. I'm sure I remember it. Uh, a bit more Rad head. Bash Gaming. He's got a Darth Maul pillow. Uh, Uncle Funko Pops. I what game's that one. there on the right-hand side? Namco. When? Probably... No, I've, I've blown a blank on that one. Um, it's a fighting game, but I don't know which one. Where? Bottom left. It's like a steelbook version of it. Oh, I don't know. It, looks, it could be maybe dead or alive. I don't know. kind of yeah, has that possibly. feel to it. I, uh, I think, to be fair, we'll, we'll scroll down to Odders because he's got a copy of Ori, the Will of the Wisps on vinyl, front and back. That looks like a fantastic uh, thing to behold. He's also mm-hmm. got the Golden Axe 1 and 2 on vinyl. which That's look, awesome. That Look at is, the artwork. I know. I know. Beautiful. Okay, so I think that's what we'd call, let's call that the full turn of the wheel because I don't <laughs> want to uh, outstay our welcome because we've had, uh, and it's the first welcome back, obviously, between now and then, Stingray will make his rounds of the listeners and they'll do the pickups that they found. Up next, the real deal. Now, he can be in two time zones at once, can our Stingray. What do you reckon he's been up to this week? Do you reckon he's been, obviously, because you've mentioned all these games are now your favourites, much like a uh, YouTuber who decides to do top tens and hidden gems in a, in a, a vain attempt to boost the value of these mm-hmm. games. Uh, here's a game no one's ever heard of that no one's really that interested in, but I'm saying it's hidden gems, so I can maybe charge an extra 50p when I sell my eight copies that I've already hoarded online always just be a little bit aware of hidden gems videos but stingray has been obviously he gets everything early he got this podcast before it was even recorded and knew what your top 10 were and he's been out and acquired bootlegs and multiple copies of everything that you've talked about and he's hawking them out the boot that's what he's up to so as he tears down broadway bobby he tears down an abandoned track in the middle of what can only be described as nowhere it's time for a peek in what we affectionately call Stingray's Boot. What's nettled? Nest, what's nettled? Now, I was speaking to an American cousin because I've got another podcast that I'm working on as well called the Aikido Cast with the Aikido Gaming Bar. Yeah, I'm excited about this. That looks uh, amazing, that bar. That I'll tell you one thing. It is definitely not safe for work, that one. Yeah, that, that looks dope. If, you, if you're a youngster, you do not want to be listening to that. Anyway, there's an American from Queens, and we got talking about nettles. Just as I misspoke, I said nestled. Nettles. Now, do you get nettles in America? I don't know what that is. It's like a green plant that has a sting to it if you touch it. It brings you out in, like, hives. Oh, uh, what? Like grows on, like, grapes. Right on the leaf? Yeah. Yeah, it grows on, like, leaf, yeah, wasteland. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, we get those over here, yeah. Yeah, okay. Nettles. You know, I can't get poison ivy. Why? Would you die? I'm immune. Wow. Yeah, when we played play manhunt or paintball as a kid, I used to hide in those bushes and get everybody. They would never, they would never come follow me in there. Wow. Yeah, it's gotta be the red hair. This dude, maybe that's your. Maybe you don't <laughs> know because you've never tested yourself. You've got a superpower. <laughs> You're impervious. Who oh, no. To like gas or biological <laughs> contaminants, you just like you just brush it off. It's crazy. Biological man. Okay. Anyway. What's not, it's not nettled, it's what's nestled between some counterfeit nappies and a dodgy copy about a friend all this week. These are the new release highlights for the August 31st, September 6th, 2020. Listeners, these are out digital or physical or will be by the time this podcast in your feed, but could be Bobby, region independent. As you know, now you're a veteran of the Unofficial Controller podcast. I tell you what, this has been like a marathon show. Yeah. Now you're a veteran of the Unofficial Controller podcast. What... VHS, are you choosing? Don't tell me yet. Okay. And what's your mummy mummy? Okay. 
Mm. Let me see here. Stingray sucking hard on a cigarette as you yeah. lean up the side of the Nissan Bluebird. Uh, what car does he drive in America? Because obviously here he drives a Nissan Bluebird. What, what, does, it, what does the vehicle look like there? Got a 1978 Trans Am. Gold. <laughs> in gold. Kind of amazing, oh, really. what a great bit of law. A yeah, gold. Amazing. Is that the Smokey and the Bandit Trans Am? Uh, it kind of looks like it, but this is a little bit more wear and tear. Of course. Obviously. It's like almost, it's almost matted now. There's not really a shine to it. Okay. I like that. I like that imagery. And it's got not only a good enough motor to outrun most local cops in their SUVs that they drive around in now, but it's also got pretty decent boot. Yeah. Have you have you picked a mummy, mummy? Uh, yeah, I guess. I guess okay. Have. What number is it? So I don't pick the same. Oh, I was say mm, six. Okay. All right, well, Ari and the Secret of the Seasons. This is my first pick out of the boot. It's on PS, PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch. September 1st, take control of the seasons and use them to solve puzzles, defeat enemies, and discover the beautiful world of Valdi in this award-winning indie adventure. One there for Adam the Artist. He likes his indie games? He sure does. Uh, up next, we got Crusader Kings 3 on PC, September 1st. Uh, sorry, Kim, I'm blind. We got Paradox Development Studio bringing you the sequel to one of the most popular strategy games ever made. Crusader Kings 3 is the heir, the hair, heir, to the long legacy historical heir, the heir, the long legacy of historical grand strategy experiences and arise with a host of new ways to ensure the success of your royal house. Actually sounds all right, that one. It's only on it PC currently, but... Uh, Here's another one, Evergate, also on PC, September 1st. Evergate is a haunting 2D puzzle platformer set in a stunning hand-drawn vision of the afterlife with an original score recorded by a live orchestra. Navigate 85 challenging stages and unleash the extraordinary powers of the genre-defining soul flame to help a lost soul reincarnate on Earth. That was amazing. Shall I, <laughs> shall I give... Uh, MX versus ATV <laughs> all out on the Switch this September 1st. All terrain, all vehicles, all you. MX versus ATV all out is the complete off-road racing and lifestyle experience. Find your rider style at your private compound. Free ride across massive environments and compete in the best series events. That was great. <laughs> That was awesome. <laughs> that was awesome. I don't think you can read out something like MX versus ATV. Yeah, you, you can't read it like that. You've you got to go like all that. in, haven't you? You definitely do. The next one, which I guess nobody will play, is on <laughs> Super Bomberman. No, R. I've got... Oh, no, sorry, Matt. I've got to do this one because I'm, I'm the do king it. of the Stadia. The Stadia is the most powerful console ever made. It's a room full of server PCs, so it's the most cutting-edge console all the time. Permanently upgraded. This is what really pays for the show because we're big okay. Stadia fans here. Right, right. Super Bomberman R online for the Stadia September 1st. Bomberman is back and stronger than ever. The eight Bomberman heroes journey to space to face the evil Emperor Bugler. Classic battle mode is back. Challenge players around the world in online battles. If you never thought you needed that game, you do now. You now. Do. now, I presume this is your mummy mummy. Yeah, I mean, it sounds interesting from what I've read. We got uh, Spellbreak on PC, P uh, PS4, and Xbox One, September 3rd. Unleash your inner, your inner batter mage in Spellbreak. When magic is forbidden, locked in the iron grip of the Vow Keepers, it's up to you to resist and reclaim what's yours. Harness the raw power of your gauntlet and tap into unimaginable forces of the elemental plane. Soar into fierce battles through floating islands and impossible terrain. To unleash the breaker within. That does sound amazing. I don't know what my mummy mummy is, to be honest. I'll pick Super Bobber Man R online on the uh, stadium. Yeah, I'm gonna pick. I'm, I'm gonna pick Spellbreak. I'm legally obliged to. I what mean, else? to be honest, 
I will. I, I like the other one too, but I don't have that's it. So we have uh, WRC nine, which I really don't know what it is. World it's, Rally Championship. Okay, which for the PC, PS4, and Xbox, September third. Uh, WRC nine is the leading off road simulation franchise endorsed by the world's top drivers. It is the most in depth rally game on the market. Three new rallies: Kenya, Japan, and New Zealand. Over 15 classic cars, 100 special stages to tackle. Uh, WRC9 has new game modes, uh, specially designed for the community, including club systems where each player can create their own championship and compete it and compete in it online with the rest of the world. Take control of all official drivers and cars in three RC WRC categories with improved physics for even greater realism, redesigned environments, and all new. Pace notes. Yeah, that's uh, in in or rally. total immersion. I don't I don't know. Is rallies that big in uh, America? But you know, Kenny Block, the guy who does all the drifting. Yes. Those sorts of cars. Mm-hmm. Two people in them. One guy going absolutely flat out through a forest in Europe, Britain, wherever it is, muddy roads, literally 150 plus miles an hour through. Trees literally whistling millimeters either side of the cabin. Wow. You've got another person in the car, so they don't really know the course. The first time they really drive, it's when they, I think they maybe get like one one run through slow or one walk through slow. And the, the co-pilot makes notes. So he's basically saying to the drivers, absolutely flooring the co-pilot's like, easy left, 90, handbrake, floor it, crest, oh, that's crazy. over crest, water, Water danger, splash through water, come jumping out the other side. And he gives you the gears to be in and the speed you need to be doing and all that sort of stuff. So he reads out the course and you just absolutely floor it, handbrake turning on gravel. So very on the edge of control. If you've never seen any rallying, A R A L Y N G, you ought to type that into YouTube and be prepared because especially in the 80s, the crowd would part like the Red Seas. There was no oh, grandstands. And they would be, someone would be lent out in the middle of the track taking a picture and he would just jump crazy. out just in the right time as the car sort of hesh past them. So, And the car's not going to slow down for them either. No, the car does not. He does not take his foot off the pedal. He's like, he I got to go. Bothered. I got to do this. Yeah. I'm in a race. You're in the way. Get out of the way. That's it. Uh, the Coma Vicious Sisters on Xbox One, September 4th. The Coma 2 Vicious Sisters is a Kari- Korean, survi- <laughs> Korean. <laughs> is a Korean survival horror adventure. Venture from your deserted school to survive the horrors of the night. Explore the surrounding Seiwa district and uncover the shadow, dark, shadow realms, dark secrets. Use everything at your disposal to avoid a demon that's hell bent on killing you. Yeah, I would like that. That sounds really cool. That sounds like your sort of thing. Maybe if that's on the aforementioned Games Pass, you can yeah, you can check it out. out. What's next, Bobby? What we got here? The Daramon story of seasons for PS4, September fourth. Uh, Japan's adored Daramon, which I'm probably pronouncing wrong. No, I think that's correct. That sounds good. Yeah, it sounds good. To <laughs> Some me. of that Ghost of Tsushima I'm playing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> meet story of season and a new fresh take on farming now on the, now on the stream. Uh, the setting is Natura, and the theme is creating bonds. While doing so, enjoy the heartwarming interactions with each character in the story. Wow. Okay. This one's short and sweet, but uh, it's also on the greatest console ever made: Marvel Avengers PC, PS4, Xbox One, and looking its absolute best. Because if you want streaming technology, you've got to go to Google. They own the internet. Stadia, Marvel Avengers. To be fair, that's a cracking way. I'm going to look into how much a Stadia actually is because it's just a little fire stick that jams in the back of your TV, isn't it? Yeah. Right, comes with a controller. You pay mm-hmm. X a month to get access to Marvel Avengers. No questions asked. Interesting. Okay. People talk to me about Games Pass and PS Now. And I'm <laughs> thinking to myself, I need a well, stadium. stadium. I'll be able to get Cyberpunk on that. You know, yeah, man. looking better than any other system as long as your internet's good enough. September fourth, okay. Marvel Avengers game pre-order. It was available for people to pick up. Assemble your team of Earth's mightiest heroes. Embrace your powers. And leave your superhero dreams. Hmm. And last but not least, 
is uh, Paradise Killer on PC and Switch, September 4th. Uh, Paradise Island, a world outside reality. There's been a murder that only investigation freak Lady Love Dies can solve. That's amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. Gather evidence and interrogate suspects in this open world adventure. You can accuse anyone, but you only have to prove your case and trial to convict. It's up to you to decide who's guilty. That sounds incredible. Pretty, that pretty gets intense. the unofficial controller podcast thumbs up. That's on PC and Switch. Lady um, Love Dies. I like it. Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2, PC, PS4, and Xbox One, September 4th. Drop back in with the most iconic skateboarding games ever made. Play the fully remastered Tony Hawk's Pro Skater and Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 games in one epic collection, rebuilt from the ground up in incredible HD. Skate! It's a legendary Tony Hawk and the original Pro Rasta, plus new pros. Skate to songs from the era-defining soundtrack along with new music. Hit insane trick combos with the iconic handling of the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater series. Play all the original game modes. Go head-to-head with local two-player modes. Show off your style and creativity with upgraded Creator Park and Creator Skater features. Take your sessions online and compete against players from around the world in multiplayer modes and leaderboards. Epic. It's exhausting being a an MTV ATM. Yeah, Tony Hawk definitely. Guy. Where in America the hell was I from when I went when I went in my assumed character there? Sounded like the Midwest. Wow. Okay. Little did I know. I want to be from New York, like Minnesota ish. I'm actually from Minnesota. Yeah. Do they do a lot of extreme sports in Minnesota? <laughs> I'm sure they do up there. I'm we sure they activity. Do. They definitely do up there. I mean, we had it here too in New York, but. I mean, I remember seeing as a kid skateboard, but not as much as people think they were, unless I wasn't cool enough to be down in Bobby. those skateboard parks. You know, you never know. Bobby, awesome. in scientific circles, they don't call it absolute zero. They just call it Bobby. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's how cool you are, friend. But this is actually the last one. Because yeah, well, we kept him on the toes, didn't it's okay. we? We sure did. This is an end credit sequence. Yes. This is called Circuit Dude on the Switch, September 7th. Circuit Dude is a top-down, tile-based puzzler with 120 levels. Help Circuit Dude build his ultimate secret invention by plugging in chips, moving blocks, rotating walls, and much more. Boom. And with that... Oh, no. There's me trying to push him out the door, and Ray's, like, in both time zones, he's like, he stops the boot from shooting. He's like, no. Mm -hmm. They shut the boot now. You've got to pick a VHS, you slimy dog. You're absolutely right, Stingers. I apologize. I humbly apologize. My VHS pick mm. is Universal Soldier, Dolph Lundgren, and Jean-Claude Van Damme. That's a classic, dude. That's a classic. What do you got? I got Batman Mask of the Phantasm. Only because my brother was watching it, and basically bootlegged it with me from Instagram video messaging. We wow. randomly watched it together through that. I don't know what I was doing. You've watched worse things. Yeah. I might love that movie. I was just not prepared to watch it through a small screen. Is that like the, is it like a, a movie version of the Batman animated series? Yes. Wow. And that yeah. was way ahead of its time. It looked great. It sounded great. Obviously Still it gave us the... Holds up. Yeah, I agree. One thing that also holds up, I think, they also did a, an animated Adventures of Superman at the same time. Yeah, that was awesome. That was equally as awesome. I've I got did really enjoy that. Both of them on Apple TV, I think it is, of all things. And I, awesome. I love going back to those. Yeah, they're classic. So that's the VHS is picked. He now allows me to shut the boot. And now he sparks up. The sound is beautiful. Of his uh, 78, 79 Trans Am in the matte gold. Not because it was sprayed matte, because time has taken its toll on the old girl. Yeah. And here, in, in not so much style, he limps off and then disappears in his Nissan Bluebird. Uh, a car so small that Americans would need one for each foot just to go down the shop. Treat the uh, Bluebird as a, a roller skate. <laughs> 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 you could probably park a bluebird in the boot 
of uh, a Trans Am. Those that paid attention at the top of the show, and poor old Odders, he's not been able to make a left or a right turn. Let's hope he was on a motorway. Actually, he probably has crashed, but he can relax on the wheel now. His commute finally nearly there. Bobby, I'm going to ask you, friend, mm-hmm. what are you hoping to play? I'm hoping to finish, not that I'm in a rush, but go to Tashima. And mm. then I have a few, I guess I have Zombie Army 4 and Zombie Army Trilogy, which my friends just bought. So maybe we can hop on that together. That, that should look like a really fun game. That's a man who loves a zombie game. So much he bought the Quadrology. Give me it now. Hey, it's five dollars on the PSN. Oh, the sale. Yeah, it's fifty bucks. That's five dollars. You can't can't go wrong with that. So I'm hoping to play now. I need a palate cleanser, because if I did Final Fantasy 13 2 now, I think you'd probably Too much. Yeah, way too much. That would be I think the earliest chance the it's half the size, maybe, so that would be ninety hours in the Final Fantasy thirteen universe. Too yeah, much. you need a break too much and before that i did 15 non-stop 40 hour game as well so mm-hmm. i put some hours in bobby if you i did. was working high up in a construction site in new york i'd be on some damn george your overtime bill looks yeah. bigger than the whole overtime buildings good. <laughs> it's good mm-hmm. working for christmas boss you yeah, do man. that you do that kids are gonna love take. you this christmas get those hours in for the vacay yeah for the vacay is that what you guys call it over there vacay, yeah Vacay. vacay. We, we go on holiday, you go on vacation, but mm-hmm. you know, the real people, they call it like, the vacay, baby. Yeah, but you could select any time you want to go off, right? You guys? Yeah. You don't you don't have a set time. You can do whatever you want, right? Oh, yeah. Well, I want a week off. Doom, it's done. When can you take time off? Whenever it has to have to be approved. Because let's say, you know, Oh, somebody... ours would have to be approved as well. Like, yeah, yeah. Off. But basically I never had never got denied. So it's not so bad. People have gotten denied though. They can be pretty pissed off that. Then they just call out sick. And then they get in trouble. And then there's a whole you know yes. drama. It'd be a bit obvious in it, to be fair. Yeah. So Especially I'm, when you're telling a six two year old man he can't take off. It's just odd. Yeah. We need you in. Like, do you though? <laughs> yeah. like, you know, honestly, I might die tomorrow and therefore you'd have to survive anyway. So why don't you see this as like practice for when I yeah. die? So true. Um, so my smorgasbord of games is going to be probably a continuation of Metal Gear Solid 4. Mm-hmm. I'm interested in diving into either Murdered Soul Suspect or the Batman Arkham game or whatever else I forgot at the top of the show. Goodness mm-hmm. knows what. Uh, and that would be it, really. I want a quiet week. I want to be able to try and get a game done in a week. One of those. I think Murdered yeah. Soul Suspect holds the most interest for me, though, because it's, it's pretty short, too, I think. Is it? I think it's only 15, 20 hours. Oh, yes, please, mummy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. That sounds yeah, like I heard it, it was pre- good. It's, it's pretty good. And it's not that long. So that could be it got remastered for PS4. So, yeah. you know, if it's that good, maybe I'll pick it up again. Maybe it's a one and done kind of thing. Bobby, yeah. is. Is that it? Is that the show done? That's it. Then a boogie. You enjoy another fine week in the autumnal New York sun. I shall cower underneath a rain-swept English countryside. Yep. And I shall turn to the listeners and say, that's all we have time for this week, listeners. As always, thank you for your time. We look forward to the pleasure of speaking to you again next week. Until then, happy gaming. Remember, there's nothing wrong with being given the unofficial controller. It's what you do with it that counts. See you, Bobby. Peace out, George. Have a good one.